Hello, hello, hello. Who's here? Who's here? So I was cleaning up my messy desk. Hello, hello. <clears throat> First time here, I'm excited. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, let's make myself bigger. I'm so glad you came. I started a bit later than I was going to. I was gonna start at like seven, but I kept, oh, I kept working on like what I was gonna work on. I, I just remembered and stuff. And I was also re recording some of the album. I think I recorded like 50 different backing, backing track vocals for it it's like over and over and over and over again you want to record them like you know like 20 times over so you get the really big really big tone um a tone a tone a tone um do i have my whole thing set up okay there we go okay hello it's the music lady We have met a few people. Um, 
So last time we talked about some of the basic, basic fundamentals. So we'll still just do a little part two of that. Um, cause I don't think I could get into like, you know, a bunch of whatever stuff, but I'll have a bunch of fun things planned. Um, again, it, I'll be repeating a little bit from the stuff I did last year, but it's just about a big refresher, you know? So the fundamentals is fungicational. But this isn't this isn't gonna be your your grandma's music theory. This ain't your this ain't your grandma's music theory. Actually no. Bless grandma, she she's fine. This ain't your, you know, your woke <laughs> music theory. <laughs> this ain't your everyday. your everyday stuff I don't want I never wanted to just repeat what everyone else has been you know how they teach music theory because I, I remember like I, I look through like I read so much like oh this university has a bunch of their music theory course online or um they, this uh book I, I go into like a music store and open like their music theory uh beginner's music theory book and I open it up and it's all like here's how you draw staff lines here uh, here's how you draw the draw this treble clef here's how you draw the whole note it's like that's not you know that's not it's important for reading music but it's not music theory you know it's notation and i will and i am planning to teach notation too like i could teach you guys how to how to read music notation it's not it's not too hard the reason why it's complicated is, is actually related to theory, like why theory is written the way it is, how we use the numbers, the letters, sharps and flats or whatever. So that makes it a little complicated. But once you know, once you see the lines and you realize, oh, it just it just makes sense. But we're going to work. A lot of people teach music theory. They teach notation first and then they work backwards. Well, this is what it means. You know, this is why. They're, they're layered up by thirds, the lines and the spaces in between. So then when you layer up the thirds together, it makes a chord or whatever. Like a lot of people, a lot of even music like majors, you know, like classical p pianists, you know, who do it for a living. And they have no idea like what, they have no, really no what I, idea what they're playing. And they don't really need to know, sure. But um, it's also why they don't write their own, why they don't write music, why they don't write their own songs. Like, you know, a, a, like a session pianist, you know, they don't really need to, you know, it's not their job. But I want everyone to be able to, be, um, everyone to be able to write their own music or understand the music that they do, that they do like and go like, oh, oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Oh, I, I noticed that. I noticed that. And not just notice um, the lyrics or the sound effects. By sound effects, I mean like, oh, this is a cool, like funky guitar sound or this is a cool, uh, uh, thumping drum sound, or this is a cool, um, raspy vocal or something. Like, those are all the sound effects, you know? That's what every, like, Pitchfork reviewer, Anthony Fantano, no offense, but that's what, like, a lot of, like, music reviewers talk about. If they don't talk about the culture of it, like, you know, so, um, they're not talking about the, the culture, the music culture behind the band or something. They're talking about the sound effect. How, how the, how the sound wave sounds like this is a plunk, a clinky sound, a plunky sound. They'll do it's a, it's a, a twinkling sound or something. But it doesn't describe what notes I'm playing. It describes maybe I'm playing high up, sure, but it's not describing I'm playing a C major chord with some octaves on the top. That's why it's twinkling. So you'll see a lot of music reviews just like so angular guitar. That's my favorite thing, a little Put cliche. The bunny. Back <laughs> in the box. Oh yeah, I can move these around again. Um, that's my favorite local music uh, review cliche: is angular guitars. It's like it doesn't. It just makes it. Oh, they're sounding. They sound distorted. I guess it's that's not describing what the what the actual music theory is. You know, um, do it yourself. Make your own music. Yes. Oh, so here's how to draw an eighth note and an eighth note rest locked in a passionate embrace. <laughs> I remember, okay, look, I went to music, I went to, like, piano uh, little classes for, like, I did, like, two piano classes once when I was, like, I don't know, six years old or something. And I still remembered. I still remembered, like, oh, that's a whole note. That's a half note. That's a quarter note. 
That's an eight. Like, I still remember that. I don't remember anything else, of course, you know. But that sort of stuff, it's kind of easy. Once you just, like, can understand that, it's pretty easy. But that's not really, you know, that's not really related to what I want to talk about. The Stevie video. No, I'm really interested in the Stevie video. I might save it for either by the end. I'm just, again, really, really worried about any copyrighted material. I think the only things I can really share are, like, video game music theory stuff, maybe. And, like, a lot, like, David Bennett channel uses, uh, he has to get covers of songs. He has to, like, commission people to make little covers of songs so he can talk about the music theory in them. So I'm kind of afraid. I know I looked at it before. Uh, maybe I'll play some of her demonstrations. I need to figure out how to actually get the video to play as well. Because when I did digital circuits, it just played all the advertisements in the middle. It's kind of annoying. So I might have to do that next time. Although, um, Renato, I'm very, uh, I, I do want to do it. I don't want to do like different uh, reaction sort of stuff. But it has to be, I have to be really careful about it. Um, even me play, um, me posting that little Twitch, that little Twitter meme of the, you spin me right round baby. Um, I was worried I might get copyright strike for that because they do that on Twitter under on Twitter too. I'm a tuba enjoyer. I don't know music theory stuff. I go bomb. Uh, but uh, tuba usually plays the bass. Usually plays the bass like these two notes, right? Like like you imagine you're playing some polka song, but it'll be like. The tuba would be playing those low notes, and or, I don't know, a strings would be playing one of those high notes. So I can go into that too. I'm just reading the messages. Bunny, a hundred bunnies. <coughs> Bunny points. It's been one on Twitch. Hello, Charlie Magd. Charlie Magna. In four minutes, I've repeated 30 second notes on the fifth different octaves. Oh, yeah, listen, like, I can't read notation, I can't sight read notation. I can take a while and really learn it, like, note by note. I'm not, like, it doesn't come intuitively to, like, I can't, like, sight read perfectly fast, but I can read it, you know? I can't go, okay, I can, like, uh, take some take the time, you know, to uh, um, to understand all the things. And sometimes I forget a clef, like, oh, what was the bass clef again, you know, for a clarinet or whatever. I, I mean, a lot of that's probably just because they're writing for an audience that doesn't know music theory. Like how renowned film critics aren't necessarily going to go through specific shots used. But I think even, I think even just like normal video channels do go into the shots used. You know, there's a lot of like Twitter, um, uh, more like video essays or they, they'll go into the shots. It's like more common knowledge, like what a dolly, what a dolly shot is or what a tracking camera is. Or choreography. People know these kind of words. And maybe they don't know every single detail. But they know that there is. But for music, it's completely obscured, I think. In a way that it isn't for either books. Because people do book reports as a kid, you know, growing up in school. Um, they know there's beginning, middle, and end. They know there's such thing as, like, exposition and character development and plot. Um, plot. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. They know those basic elements, you know. It's not just plot and setting and character they know like the building blocks of the thing you know uh for the most part they know like genre and stuff um i think for music they well they guess they do know genre they just don't they just don't know the the fundamentals i guess because they're invisible i guess you can only hear them and people don't trust their ears as much as they trust um their eyes I'm sorry, Renato. I don't even think music uh, music critics music critics even understand music theory either. I think they don't need to. They, the music critics were basically the ones to push the whole music theory is anti art. Music theory is um, all the best musicians don't know any don't know what they're playing. That's how it's good. Even people think jazz musicians just play random notes, you know, as if they they don't know what they're playing. The Metallica stream? Yeah, I guess so. I do remember, right? Didn't they just get, like... Yeah, VODs get muted, yeah. You block since works on YouTube. Mm -mm -mm. 
I don't. Th- I guess it is a little more academic, but I think um, there, sh- there there should be some kind of basic cultural knowledge of just at least the basics. It's not like I'm asking people to know what a sharp nine at thirteen uh, chord is or something, but just um, some basics, you know, just like they would for other. Like people know what you know, some basic painting stuff because, um, you know, like oh, that's like cubism or mosaic or that's a, uh, I don't know. Um, I want to push it forward for music. Kind of no major minor. Not really. I guess that's it. Yeah, it's basically just major minor. That's only kind of recently. Um, I don't know, Charlemagne. Even like prog rock people have no idea what music is actually being played. You know, a lot of uh, prog rock fans or whatever. Or, you know, all the complex, complicated things. They don't really know. So um, let me bring up the image. Of the fundamentals. Oh, hello, hello. I'm being blocked. I'm being blocked. So this is what I went over last time. I can go over it again a little bit. I need to get a good, a better, a better view of it. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It can't be, can't be hidden. Hello, hello. I'm here. I'm still alive. So again, in the first rung, first rung here, if, if I could reach, if I could reach, up, up here, up here, <laughs> we have the sound waves. So it's just like, oh, if I do that, a weird, a weird little siren, uh, it basically will look like that in my little, in the little, um, in a, in a sound, in a sound, um, in a sound wave. Uh, when I played violin, I think I just... Yeah, music theory just under, just like, it, it appreciates. It's always a good thing, I think. More knowledge is always a good thing. Imagine being a painter and not wanting to learn color theory or like anatomy or, you know, uh, a vanishing point or any of the basic stuff. Like, that would be, that would be stupid. Like, you would want to learn all these things because it's cool, right? Um, so sine wave... Um, so then, okay, so in that, uh, whatever that little siren is actually like, you know, you can say there, well, we split up all those little, um, all the sound wave notes, like, uh, into like, da, 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 you know, think of like that. We chop them up into little discrete parts like this, and I'll show a demonstration of that in a program in a second. Then we can split it up even more and um, let's say cut out a lot of some, uh, every like half note or so. Let's do this. So we, if we cut out all these extra notes, we don't have 12 notes, but we have just seven. Then some of we have a C major scale. We could work with this, you know? Um, and then if we cut that up even more, we cut out, let's say every second note again, almost. We, instead of this, we have there we go. So now we cut it up even more. We have a C major scale. So we went from the big, um, the big sine wave of all the notes into that, and then into that, and then into that. So now we're at the chord. So that's the C major chord. So that's how we get the C major chord. We reduce everything down. Or we can technically build up from the C major. So it's like, oh, we have a C major. We have a bunch of space in between these two notes, let's say. So let's just fill in all the spaces. And then suddenly we have our chromatic scale again, you know? So it's just filling in, um, there's music everywhere, you know, whenever you speak, whenever you talk like this, so I'm speak, you know, you're talking to anyone, you're using a pitched, a pitched sound, you know, a vibrating sound wave that can be approximated to one of the 12 sort of tones, you know? Um, and that's how we get like the C major chord, or the, this chord, or that chord, or that chord. We're using different kind of combinations of all these sort of 12 notes. That chord, we're using that note, that note, that note. Um, if you want to go higher, it's the exact same frequency, but doubled. That's the sort of thing I think, I think confuses people. The, what is an octave? An octave means eight. That's what oct means. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it really, it should be called like a 12 octave because 12 notes, you know, but 
again, the C major scale. The major scale kind of rules a lot of terminology. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but once we uh, go through 12 of these notes, we start over again. And we start over again. But it's the exact same notes. Um, it's just higher or lower. It's just like a uh, different shade of red. It's still red. It's a lighter red or a darker red, but it's still red. Or it's a capital C and a, a lowercase c and a capital C. It's still the letter C, but we're just doing it a little higher. So if you think about it, all these notes, I'm just playing the same notes over and over again. Basically every single 12 note cycle just repeating itself over and over again. So um, it may look intimidating, there's all these notes, right? But really, it's just these notes. It's just uh, all these notes. <laughs> rainbow, and then another rainbow. The same, the same ones. Another rainbow, the same ones. Another rainbow, the same ones. It's basically, uh, pianos are basically like you could buy different keyboards online, right? So um, they always split it up with like, oh, this is a, uh, let me go higher. Let me go over the, over the little thing. <laughs> um, so um, a lot of uh, pianos online will say, oh, it's six octaves or it's four octaves. It really just means this is one octave, right? So I want to get this one, that one, that one, that one. You can buy like a piano that has only two octaves. It's really just this one and that one, right? So you can only play this these many notes, but maybe that's all you need, right? Or maybe you could. I could have a one, two, three, four, five, six. Technically, I have or five. I have sixty-one keys basically. So I have all these notes I can work. With. So I can play something like that. All I'm doing is playing these notes: red, green, and blue. 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 Red. Red, green. It's just playing the same thing over and over again, but just like higher or lower. Um, the realization that a B flat and A sharp were the same notes when I was learning music was mind blowing to me. Oh yeah, that's another thing. This is why we call like I just say C. We can go into the names of the notes, I guess, another time. I wanted to go into more um, just the fundamentals again. I wanted to show. Let's see. Um, this little program I have. Let's see if this works. <coughs> uh, hold on, let me get this set up. <laughs> okay, this should work. Let's see, let's see. Aha, I got it, I got it working. Nice, nice. So this is called a piano roll. See the pianos on the, on the left here? See over here? Right beside me, right behind me. So, I wish physics and music theories collaborated more in my school. I mean, I think some people go a little too overboard. I'm just kind of talking about this just to show that music, the way we determine music isn't like magical or anything. It's just like, it's literally the air we breathe, you know? Um, so you can see all the, look, I have all 12 of these in vertical, vertical rows. So it starts in the C here. Let's just show that. See, the note is right at the C there. I need some like, kind of cursor. Where's my little Kirby? Let's get my Kirby <laughs> to be my cursor for me. Kirby dance. Ba -ba -ba. I'll get my chat box over as well. Twitch activity feed. Oh, thank you. Thank you for following. Thank you, everyone, for following. We had Kamari Volta and Mitchell Whitman for following. Thank you. Thank you. Um, speaking of just simple scales and chords, the common misconception when you mentioned earlier that lots of artists don't know what they're playing. Nirvana, very punk. Um, I showed you with that concept heavily. Oh yeah, like like all that stuff was basically invented by I think music critics, like the writers themselves, the journalists. 
the musicians like it's it's very hard not like it's impossible not to know any music theory at all like Jimi hendrix knew music theory everyone knows music theory at, at some to some extent you know almost very very few of them really like repeat the kind of the kind of lie that like oh if you if you learn music theory it, like steals your soul like how I don't know if you get photographed, like a part of your soul gets like possessed or something. It's just like it's it's completely nonsense. Um, but anyways, uh, so here we go. We have our first note there on the C. So what it's gonna do? It's gonna play from left to right every note in sequence. Um, it's gonna do two different octaves. So twelve notes, and then halfway through, it's gonna do another twelve notes. So let's see if it can get all the way up here. Um, let's see if it plays it. So I did it played uh let's let's make that a little louder. Um, let's make it louder. There we go. Okay. So that's just two octaves, that's uh, these notes. Same notes. Um what we're gonna do, we're gonna go backwards. So we're gonna play actually everything in one full uh, swoop. So instead of just that, those kind of notes, we're gonna do like this. So that was a lot. That was a lot weirder. It was just like one continuous swooping line, step by step, almost the MGS ladder. Yeah. Let's start. So technically, like again, that just like played every note in between every note. <laughs> It probably, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, songs which use the sliding thing. Like, technically a violin has no frets, and it could basically do that. Like, I could do it on a guitar. Let's see, with a slide. It'd probably be a little hard to hear. a slide it's a slide up you know um that's got all the non-western notes in there yeah that's what i mean so this is when people say microtonal they're just talking about every single note in between uh, like you could do that you know that's just a sliding scale up but so what the chromatic scale does it says all right that's that's a lot of notes to work with technically that's an infinite amount of notes so what we're gonna yeah I could play it to acoustic folk blues. I, I wrote I wrote a little folk uh, bluesy song for um, um, after the four some some uh, some uh, video game mod. So um, so let's uh, if I record that, let's record it. Um, you're gonna look at the actual sound wave. Mm -hmm -hmm. Legato portamento. Here we go. Mm -hmm. All these Italian words, legato, potermento, uh, ritardando. Oh, it's way past your bedtime. Hello, hello. Hope you're not staying up too late. Uh, I'm going to guys show you the actual waveform now. Let's see. Let's see. Just a few little clicks. Um, a few clicks, a few clicks. <laughs> a few more clicks. <laughs> okay, so this is the actual waveform. You've probably seen stuff like this. So look at this. This is the sound wave. It's literally they, that shows what how the how the air particles are vibrating. 
This is how quickly they're vibrating up and down as the air, as the air goes through, and they're making the pitches. So look at this. This is like pretty wide. Every like fluctuation here, if you measure the distance between each little wave, that's going to tell you the pitch. So look, we're going to keep on going. Look what's happening. What are these lines? Look at these lines. What's happening to these lines? It's so much skinnier. They're so much skinnier. They're so much uh, tighter packed together than what they are uh, towards the lower end. Like these are a lot wider in between. And as you keep going, they get skinnier. They get denser and denser. A little skinnier and tighter and tighter packed together. And that's what it means when a note is going higher. Oh, thank you. Oh, this is a Reaper. I use Reaper. Um, so if I even had a bigger example, I can even show it. Um, do I have this one? This is a little more, I think this old, old thing I made. I had try, I tried to prepare this in, in, in advance. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So as you get higher in pitch, it gets tighter and tighter, the notes. Um, and as an if a note is exactly half as much, so let's say there's a big wave, right? And there's another wave that's exactly like half as half as uh, skinny, you know, half as dense as the other. That's an octave. So this is exactly half as dense as uh, half as uh, uh, half as tight as this one. And the, these two notes, these are half as tight as each other. These two notes are half as tight. These two notes are half as a little tight together. So that's all an octave is, is the wave exactly like um, crunching together. And actually, well, what if it's like in halfway in between this and that? Well, that's going to be half as well, you know? Half of, half of this is half. And that's going to be a little bit less than half, you know? This is going to be a certain other nice, nice, uh, nice thing. So that's what uh, intervals are. So this is going to be one kind of, um, these, two, these two waves are going to be exactly, they're going to exactly uh, divide into each other perfectly by half. Um, these are going to be a little off, just almost under half. A little bit under half. Uh, a little more like you, a nice little um, two different waves that can go together pretty nice. Dun, dun. All these different ways kind of interact with each other differently. And what if you have two multiple different ways like this going on at once? You have the two waves going on that are exactly half. Another wave that is almost half, but not like um, you know half of half. And then something like this. Well, how you have all these different ways that are interacting with each other in um in a harmonious way. That's why it's called harmony. All these different sound waves going together. So I just wanted to show that, how show, like, you can literally do, you can literally make music by just, um, um, doing a siren. Ah, a little weird little siren like that. That's all the notes, basically, of the thing, you know? It's weird when I call them Western music, because, like, I don't know, what's Western music, you know? I think of, like, a violin is, is, uh, there's no frets on it, so technically you could play everything. The reason why... There's 12 chromatic notes. It's because they, you know, they needed a number to this, to this, to, um, they needed a number, you know, to divide all this, uh, one, one octave that can be, um, distinguished with each other. And, um, it actually took hundreds and hundreds of years for them to actually develop instruments and different, um, the right instrument, the right tunings. For all the different instruments to actually play together, because a C on this, a C on this keyboard, let's say on a piano of like 300 years ago, would have been completely like a little bit different than a C on like a lute, or a C on a flute, or a C on a clarinet, or a C on a cello. They were all like kind of offbeat a little bit, and maybe like they would all decide, okay, these couple of notes would be in tune. Maybe just these notes will be in tune. At least, at least one octave would, be, at least one of these notes would be in tune. But these, these notes maybe would be out of tune. So it's like, all right, let's just focus on these kind of notes, you know? So it made it, um, the, the history of music, like education and music, um, not music education, but music technology of like, um, 
trying to get all these notes to kind of harmonize with each other. So now on a modern piano, I can make a chord like that or chord progressions like this. And they all kind of, they're in tune with each other. It's not, when people talk about microtonals, it's more like, well, you can make these two kind of, these two kind of notes harmonize in a lot nicer. Maybe it's like a few tiny centimeters, a few cents of um, heart, uh, dissonance in there compared to like a pure, a more pure tentament, temperament. But to make sure all these notes can interact with each other well and in harmony with each other, more or less, they're all a little actually out of tune. Just a little, 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 little bit. The octaves are good, but some of the notes in between, you know, it's kind of hard to really actually make it perfectly divisible by 12. So it's called equal temperament. So all these kind of notes can function together more or less well. And it's almost impossible to really hear the difference unless you have perfect, perfect pitch or whatever. Um, but that's, if you ever hear anything about microtonal or like, oh, the true the true tuning scales or whatever, that's all, it's all just kind of bullshit. It's all just like, it's hard to actually make music with all, under all 12 of these notes. If you don't fudge the math a little bit. But anyways, that's a little aside. That's just a little aside. An out of tune orc band orchestra is a beautiful thing. As beautiful as a flock of seagulls, <laughs> geese being mur murdered. I said a flock of seagulls. Well, listen, even the idea that you can have big symphonies and big orchestras and a bunch of music um, instruments being played together is only something possible through like modern technology. Um, um, you can't have like, you know, maybe you can get a harpish chord and like one other instrument to kind of play together well back in the old days. But like other than that, it would have been super hard to actually tune it properly. Or they had to be really, really careful what notes they played. They can only play like, you know, one key and maybe a, f a couple of others and then they had to kind of switch you know they couldn't just like play whatever notes they wanted all the time because everything would be out of tune eventually um so they had to keep the, the bands a little small the little orchestra bands small they had to keep things pretty um pretty compact and a lot of non-western music wasn't like sure they used like more than 12 notes extra on, on top of whatever a lot of notes in between, but they weren't playing a lot underneath. That this is a different this is a different lecture, honestly. It's a different between Western and like non-Western music. I, I never really cared about that. I kind of ranted about it before. It's basically a difference between, I guess, modal and chordal music. Um, which again, there's not really much of a difference between it. Um the way uh non-Western classical kind of um people dealt with it is basically they didn't really move the bottom note. They would have one bottom note and play with, and play a bunch of modal notes around. So they didn't, and there wasn't a lot of, uh, like, you know, three, you know, 300 instruments playing together, different notes all playing harmoniously with, with each other. It's much more like sort of uh, monophonic or a lot more modal. I'll get into that stuff later, but that's not really important. So anyways, um, what I did here is I, let's see. Nice. So what I did here, see, look, so we still have Sarah C here, but I, what I did is re re removed some of the notes in between. Oh, I'm floating. I'm floating. So just like in the little um, image here, let's bring that up again. See how we have started with the chromatic scale here. It's all 12 notes. But now we're going to re re remove a few of the notes. It's a very specific pattern. There's a specific formula of what notes we can remove or not to still make it sound like a major scale. Um, so we're going to remove the second note, the fourth note, then um, ba -ba -ba -ba, the sixth note, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, the seventh note, the eighth, the ninth note, ten, the... Um, the tenth note, eleventh note. So we're gonna remove basically all the black notes. <laughs> so to do that, we just remove all the black notes. Here we go. Oh, ah, there we go. 
If we remove all the black notes, we have a very specific little pattern. Oh wait, I forgot to change the instrument. <laughs> Let's do that. I gotta make it uh, play specific notes again. There we go. <laughs> so obviously the, the gaps in the sound, the gaps in the actual, um, obviously in the timing there is actually the gaps we, we, we left out, you know? So there's always going to be one note of space in between two notes, or no notes of space. So we call that a, a whole step, or a half step. Half steps are like two notes that are right beside each other, and a whole step is two notes that have a space in between. So that's so important for anything to do with understanding music. It's all about the space in between, or the tension between two notes. When two notes are right beside each other, it's a lot more tense. When two notes are kind of have some space, it's a lot more, uh, it's a little, it's a little more relaxed. The more space you give it, the more, the more, the less tense it is. Um, so that kind of, those kind of little patterns we get in between, um, in between the notes, and you can even give it more space. What if you... Just remove even more notes. Well, then we get that C major chord I talked to you. I talked to you. About. So basically, all the twelve, the, the, all the twelve notes you could get comes from the big sound wave that com that has every note in it that you can imagine. The chromatic scale sort of organizes those into twelve kind of notes so we can all harmonize with each other to some extent, and then um, we can re reduce them even further so we can get a nice little chord. So if I can play like this chord, that chord, that chord, that's just all taking, I'm taking little, uh, little bits and pieces from the big sound wave that we used before. Um, it's just deciding what, what, what little sound waves do we want to use over certain chords over this root, over that root, over that root, over that root. I can choose any of these notes that I want to. And they all have their own specific sound, because remember how these are perfectly divisible by one, by two, you know? But then these are divisible by a different number, and these are divisible by a different you know, so they all have their own nice little sound on your ears. They feel they feel nice on your ears. That's what a lot of um, modal music does. They just kind of play a low drone. Think of um, think of a sitar. They have that drown sound, and then a lot of nice little nice little sounds on your ears. Or a bagpipe. They do the same thing. them sound so that's how that's why um that's the kind of um, thing it's manipulating you know the thing it's shaping you're shaping literally the sound that gets to your ears with the little sound waves and then like the scales that we've figured out as a society as a as our culture these kind of <laughs> um scales like this the little patterns of what notes to use and what notes not to use have a certain effect on our ears, you know? And there's so many different ones. See, because I'm constantly playing this one, I'm constantly reinforcing the different harmonic little um, clashes that are happening. What if I wanted to play something mean to my ears? Well, remember how I said half notes, uh, um, half steps sound good? Look, there's a note right in between this, right? A chromatic note in between. So just, it's a little less tense. And when there's a chromatic note, there's no chromatic note in between. So there's nothing in between E and F. There's nothing in between here, so it's actually a lot more tense. What if 
I just play two notes that are right beside each other? What does it sound like? It's G, it's Jaws. So two notes right beside each other can be pretty tense. But um, what if we have a scale that is just all the notes right beside each other? It's a chromatic scale, so this is technically like the most tense scale technically, but I think there's a lot more tense. Um, how about this sitar scale I played before? Ooh, what's this? I'm playing two notes that are right beside each other, right over the root. It's called the root when we play whatever we want to define another note by. We want to make a note association. So if I'm playing like this one, and there's a low bass note there, let's say a tuba is playing it, let's say a tuba is playing this F note, and a violin is playing this note. Technically, this should be the root for the most part, usually. This is one of the most complicated things of music theory, is figuring out what is the root. If I'm playing something like this, what is the root of this? It can be, it can be a ton of different notes, who knows? It's probably the C, the lowest note. The lowest note is usually the root, but it's not always. So that's going to be a little bit of a, of a, of a, of the most difficult part of music. You know, I tried to do, I, I, I transcribed tons of music. I, I got into transcribing songs since I was start, first started playing guitar. I wanted to know what notes are being played, like in a video game song. I would like listen to it. I would like separate the channels and try to say, oh, oh this bass note is doing this. And I was like, what are those notes? Oh, it's a C. I would play, oh, okay, that's a C note. Then I would, uh, oh, that's a G note. Oh, that's a C, you know? And then I realized this is just like a C major scale pattern. It's a C major scale, so it does something like that. It's just playing a C major scale. It's like, oh, okay. So gradually over time, I learned how to actually transcribe music and I realized I don't even really need to go to my guitar and really listen. Oh, is that the same note? Really? Like, I could just see, oh, yes, yeah, it's the C major scale because it's, it becomes so familiar to you, just like language does. So, so, you know, like learning English, you don't need to, what is C-A-T? What is C-A-T? It's a cat, you know, obviously it's cat. Um, and the thing about, well, the alphabet, there's 26 different letters in the alphabet and millions of different words. But with music, there's only 12 different notes. There's only 12 notes you need to worry about, and they all repeat after, so those are all basically the same thing. So once you know one little octave, you know all the octaves. You know all this one. It's actually easy. It's not like you need to know, uh, you know, 5,000 different kanji or something like that. It's just 12 notes. And they combine in different ways, just like, uh, just like words do. C, A, and T. Cat. Um... These are combinations of different uh, wave frequencies, remember? chords there that are basically like, you know, very fundamental sort of chords you've probably heard a billion times. Because really, these are the chords you've heard a billion times before. These are the exact same kind of chords that make up billions of different songs. And all they are are combinations of different little frequencies. This is a C major chord, F major chord, G major chord, A minor chord, E minor chord, D minor. Like it's all, it's, it's, um, it is a lot to like learn. But once you know uh, the basics, um, you can kind of, uh, um, there's not that much. It is a lot to learn, but it's easier than learning a language, I think. With a language, you need to learn a lot more. The problem with music theory, it's usually invisible, right? When the written language for it is really hard to read, the notation. It's, it's very, um, it's like, it's very obscured, you know? But um, I think even just your ear. If you listen to enough, you start to recognize him in all sorts of songs.
whole meme song, we are number one, but it's like, okay, I'm just using, I'm using this as a root, I'm using a minor third, and a perfect fifth. And I'm playing with the augmented fourth here. And a million songs use little tricks like that, you know? So if I, I just sort of break everything down into intervals like that. Um, which I'll go into each one, of course. This is just a little overview and to show you how much, um, you can really learn just by music. So what I did like here was just like organize these into chords. So I got A, let's let's bring it over. So you get this, oh, it's cutting it off. It's cut, there we go. There we go. So this is using a C3 there. And then this next note here is a E note. And then the next note here is a, is a, is a is a, is a G, we call it, and this is another C. So it's really just, it's just really just repeating the same last note. We don't even need it here. So if you see, the, look at the shape. It's like these three notes stacked on top of each other with a few notes in between of space. And these notes are space in between too. And then look, so okay, so now we're gonna start it from F. Here's another chord. This is the F note. We can see, oh, I stretched it. Ha <laughs> ha, so that's the F note. And then this is the A note and C note. It's the same C note as that makes the other chord, of course. So it's the same pattern. Look, it's the F, there's space in between. There's space in between this one. And then there's another note. Look, G, it's a G, then it is some space. Then the B note, some space, and then the D note. It's the same like pattern over and over. Of C, F, A. Well, how about if we G? So we just take this pattern here. Up to A. That's an A. That's going to be A major chord. Or let's just make a random note. What's this note? It doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to this note. This is an E flat note. Okay. So we're going to do that note. We're going to lose the two two notes of space here, da, 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 or three notes of space. Sure. And then another two notes of space. Okay. There we go. And that is a E flat note. A E flat major chord. C major. F major, G major, C major again, A major, and then E flat major. Ooh, sounds pretty cool. Hello, Liquid American. Hello, hello. I've got an EP. I must go to work early tomorrow. Oh, have a wonderful, have a wonderful day at work. Have a wonderful day at work. Have some music playing in your head while you're bored, and maybe you won't, you won't, you, the day will go by faster for you. Um, I used to just like again play music in my head so you can let's take the shape kind of, shape kind of anywhere in a dot it's really it's really cool it's really cool whatever this low note is will be the root of the chord we can bring it up to c we can bring it up to c sharp we can bring it up to d d major major or a flat uh, G sharp major or a flat major um, it's all just the same it's all just the same patterns over and over and if we want to make a minor chord we take the little middle note we make it a little shorter I'll get into all how to actually build chords later I just wanted to kind of show you how kind of simple it can be really um, so now this is a F minor chord Ooh, very cool all we did was change this little note frequency, a higher or lower. This is major. Uh, let's make this a lot bigger. <laughs> and minor, it does this. Or this. When I sing, I'm singing the C. I'm singing the C note. And so the C stays the same in each chord, right? Let's bring these right beside each other. Uh, so you can really see, this is the F, F minor chord. Oh, I'm blocking it a bit. So this is an F minor chord on the left here, and an F major chord. So the only real difference, see, look, they both start in F here. Oh, I blocked it again. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's bring everything together. There we go. So F, F, uh, A flat, technically. Well, don't think about You don't need to know the name. The, the, you don't need to think about the letters right now yet. And this note. So these notes stay the same. The root, technically the lowest note. And the fifth note we're going to call it the fifth. Um, 
says the same. The only thing that changes is a little thing in the middle. We change it from one chromatic note to the other chromatic note. Um, that's all we're really doing. So when I think about like a chord, like I could play. These are just the notes that don't play. So I get to choose if I want to play this, this one or that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is an F major. This is an F minor. A little bit of lift, right? Let's switch them around. So again, I was like, no, because if I know that this is playing this note, this A flat note. All I need to do is play that A flat note when I'm doing my little chords, right? Yeah, yeah, lower, deeper tone. Like, literally, look, the minor note is literally lowering down. It's going from this note to that note. You're literally lowering the pitch, lowering that frequency. You're making that frequency, that really tight frequency, you're making it a little wider, you know? Just a little wider in relation to the bottom note, the root. Your, your ears can hear, like, you know, multiple pitches at once. And it'll pick up the lower note, or whatever it thinks the root note is, and associate it with whatever the other note is. So I'll do a little demonstration um, of how powerful this is when you have one note and then another note sort of interacting with it in a special way. So let's see. Um, let's get rid of this for now. Actually, no, we could keep that up. Um, no, wait, I want to bring up my... Um, there we go. So, I want, so I'm going to bring it. So what I'm going to do is going to play the root note, you know. The root we're going to decide is C. It could be any note. We can pick G. We can pick this note, that note, this note, that note. Any of the notes, whatever we want. But we're going to pick C just to make it simple. So I'm going to play another note, another notes on top. So we're going to go, how, let's see, should we go up, uh, up or down? Should we go up on our octaves or down in our octaves? So I'll take the first. I'll take the first uh, response in the in the in the comments in the chats. Say either up or down or top or bottom. <laughs> if you want to say top or bottom, <laughs> now's your chance. Up. We're gonna go up then. I don't think the top or bottom really even makes sense. I just want it to be funny. Um, da, 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 da. One more thing. I'll move this to the side a bit. And I wanted to show a, a name of all the intervals. So one moment. Well, let's do this for a second. Actually, no, it's fine. Let's play. It's really got this in your ears, you know? Just like when a movie is setting up a character or you're reading a book, it's, a, it's the establishing shot of a sitcom. It's the first thing you see in a painting. It's the first big letter in your essay you need to write. The big T, you know, the. So, but now we're gonna introduce our first little character. Did he squint a bit? Was it a little hard on your ear? <laughs> Suddenly, if this is our root, the note that's right above it, one chromatic note will be called the minor second. It's one half step above as well. Minor second it's called. really rough on the ears, but it's very, very powerful. It's using a lot of different kind of uh, music, so I'll go into that later. I want to do a whole modal modal um, exercise, too, in just a moment. Or maybe that's a little too much. Maybe I might play Final Fantasy a little bit. But anyways, so this is a minor second again. So now we're going to go with something called a major second. Remember how ma minor and major are one note, uh, one note different? The minor is one note lower. Well, we're going to do that, too. Well, to get to the major, we go one note high. Ooh. Nice, nice 
nice a lot of space here. It's a lot less tense, you know? It's not the Jaws theme. Of we have this sort of thing. So we asked our minor, a major second. So now we're going to go for a minor third. Well, we just saw that with the F minor thing before, but here's a minor third. Very intense, too. And we have the C heat. to this, there's two notes in between these, two other notes, we have a minor third difference, which gives a very characteristic, very minor feeling, it feels like minor, this is a whole minor, this is a minor third in the minor chord, this is what gives the minor chord its name, think of like the Higgs boson giving a particles its mass, this gives it some minor or major quality, well, what is major? Major, very, very happy, very nice. something like this, then this note would not be a minor third anymore to the C. This is a, a, a C or a major third anymore. It's, you need the root to give another interval its um, harmony. This note doesn't really mean anything by its on its own, right? You need some kind of root note to really give it its own color, its own flavor. Its, really, uh, its own flavor. So let's go even higher. What's higher than this? That's called a perfect four. We'll go into that why it's called perfect maybe another thing. Um, there's even more space in between. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four notes in between from the root, and also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes from here. So now we're actually, you know, we're going, we're going up. We might reach this uh, C someday, you know, from this middle note. Okay, so then the it's um. But see, there's something uh, with this note, is it's actually, it's right beside this last note we did too, right? Gotta drive! Oh, have a wonderful time! Please do not drink and drive. Drink water. Hopefully you don't need to drive like pretty work or something. Have fun with that. So now we're gonna go to perfect fourth. We're gonna go even higher to... Oh, augmented fourth it's called. Or a sharp fourth, maybe a major fourth, minor fourth, major fourth. Anyways, so this is a. If you think about it, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I mean, one, two, three, four, five notes in between these two notes, and also one, two, three, four, five notes in between as well. So this is exactly right in between. Don't keyboard and drive. So this is exactly. Frequency right in between. If these if these two frequencies are exactly doubled, then this is right in between that, and it's really very very difficult on the ears. This is a tritone, you know, devil's devil's note, which is obviously just a historical meme, but it is very tense. So really, um, almost all tension in music is going to be based on the half note interval, the notes that are right beside each other, and this note, the notes that are as far apart as each other as possible. So the notes that are as close to, to each other as possible, and the notes that are as far apart to each other as possible. It's called the tritone, augmented fourth. Bunch of names for it, but very, 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 very important. Really the entire, all of Western music theory wouldn't work without this, without this interval. And I will eventually explain that. <laughs> Let's go to the next highest note, which is, ah, uh, there we go. That feels nice. It almost feels like I'm playing nothing at all. I could be playing this. Look, I'm just playing the red notes, right? Now I'm playing the, the blue notes in between. You can barely really even hear it, can you? Only reds. Now reds with blues.
fundamental thing. So if these two are, these also have a perfect ratio of the wave frequencies interacting with each other. All these other intervals have some like, you know, little, little quirk with them. Especially all these minor key ones, you know, all the, there's a bunch of weird harmonies, but these two, these two fit together like bread and butter, like peanut butter and jelly. with each other without knowing how to harmonize and one person sings that note like bah. the next note the other person will probably sing if it's not the same note will be the fifth like bah, bah. it'll probably be that just naturally that's what they will think because they go together so well remember when we had our uh our f, our f chord well these are a perfect fifth apart the only note that changed was these two notes in between so basically, these two notes just are a match made in heaven. A perfect heaven. Perfect fifth. So anyways, there's a lot more we could talk about the perfect fifth. But anyways, ooh, this is a difficult one. Another very tense one. But now we're, now we're almost there, you know? We're almost up to the, up to the, up to the root again. So this is actually a super, super important interval. It's called the minor six. The minor six, so the next one must be major six, right? But the minor six, I have a whole chart on it. Just this interval, it's that important. Because it's so tense, but not tense like this, right? It's a little tense in a different way, you know? So we'll go into that another time. But this is just, again, a different kind of color when you have this note there. Now we go to, okay, major six, wonderful. This is another very happy, I think, open open um, interval. Very nice. Then we go to minor seventh. This is also one of the most important intervals in music theory. The minor seventh interval, which is related to this one, believe it or not. They all have their own little weird interactions with each other. Then major seventh. This is a beautiful uh, beautiful one. As tense as it is, it's always a note right behind the root. Whatever your root is, if it's G, this is going to be the minor seventh. If it's D, this is going to be the, I mean, sorry, major seventh. This is going to be the major seventh. If it's your B, this is going to be the major seventh. And if it's C, it's going to be the B. It sounds really tense, doesn't it? But it's so high above, it's so like high over, that it doesn't quite get in the way as much as, let's say, the mine, this one does. intervals have their own story to tell, have their own interactions, have their own color that they can add, have their own songs I could give a little demonstrations of, have their own wonderful little um, flavors you can do. And this is going by C. Again, like we can change the root. We can change it to this G note. Well, if we go to G, okay, this is our minor second now from G. This is our major second, minor third, major, uh, major third, perfect fourth, augmented fourth. Uh, perfect fifth. There we go. That's our perfect fifth. Uh, minor six, major six, minor seventh, major seventh. There we go. So they all have their own little names. But you can just change your, to whatever you want, and I can know exactly how to build the chord. Remember, I showed the chart before, which had um. Here we go. All right. I said uh, to get the third, you just do take that note, that note, that note to get the chord. Uh, well, you can just also go by chromatics. Look, one. The C, right? And then you skip the C, the C sharp. Where's my little Kirby buddy? Here we go. Come on, Kirby. Where? Which one is that? I keep clicking. There we go. So I go to C. We just skip these notes in between. We go to E. We skip these notes in between. We go to G. There we go. So we can start on any notes. We can start on F. Okay, F. We skip these notes in between. We go to A. Skip these notes in between. So it's not simple to just get any interval from any other interval. If someone just like saying a random note like bum, that would be whatever that note is. I can like think of the intervals above like bum da da. That would be yeah okay. So I went to the um 
a minor third above. And then I went to the thing, um, to the minor second above it. And I probably would have went to the snow, you know? Um, da da, da da, ba da. It's funny, actually, it's a major third of the F, of the F root. So basically, um, I'm just showing that um, intervals are just like the root of everything. And any kind of chord thing, you can think of it as terms of intervals. that kind of stuff I'm kind of just thinking out of the chords and I can add the little extra intervals on top like if this is a G chord if this is a major six this is a perfect fifth so I can do and I can do the same thing when I'm on the C note this is a major six to the perfect fifth again any any kind of chord I could do it to any like this is kind of simple because it's like it, it just uses the same formula for every single chord you want to play you can build the same chord off of every, any single note and it's all going to be like um working on the same rules you know um if you know the rules for one chord you kind of know all you know, all the different weird intervals you can stack on top of the roots right so i'm adding all these different other colors on top that all have their own kind of names and stuff like that but if you could just figure out, if you just um, remember like what intervals they all are, you can kind of play together with them. So um, I think I'm getting a little off track. Oh, I'm getting all, I'm getting all sweaty. Oh my god, we've been going for an hour already. Oh my god. So um, I want to show a different chart at least. Let's see what other charts do I have. I did show that color scale before. Um, just the different names of the intervals. I guess I'll show that just really quick. Um, let's see. Let's see. Cause I already showed these last time. So these, this isn't even new ones. Um, so yeah, right. This is just, uh, again, the, um, the, uh, names of all intervals I was going into. So the top, uh, the top of the left little description is start from any note and proceed following the chart, picking one note from each intervallic pairing for a total of seven unique notes. Each interval has its own distinct color as in chroma that can contribute to the music you wish to make. Exper experiment and mix and match to hear each color. The left side column will provide a darker color overall scale. The right side intervals brighter. So basically the minor thirds, the minor sixes will obviously get more darker colors than the major, just because the frequencies have a little more space to breathe. They're a little wider in between each other. So this adds a little tighter. This is a little, little brighter, you know? Tighter, a little brighter. Uh, tighter, little brighter, you know? Um, and it's funny, well, if you think about it, what is that interval? This is technically a major third interval. And this is a minor third interval. So that's why roots can be pretty tricky, because they can be up or down. It can kind of twist around, which makes the music making really, really fun, actually. Um, oh, I'm not even going through this properly. Okay. Kirby, Kirby. I gotta find where this Kirby is in my OBS. Here we go, Kirby Dance. No, this is the other Kirby Dance. Here we go. Let's put you here. So you have your major and minor second, you have your minor thirds and major thirds, you have your perfect fourth and augmented fourth, you have your perfect fifth, the big one, then you have your minor sixth and major sixth, then you have your major seventh and uh, minor seventh and major seventh, and then you have your root. So um, I showed you the major scale. Well, that's not the only pattern of notes you can have. Technically, this is roots, um, major second, major third, a perfect fourth, a perfect fifth, a major sixth, a minor seventh, and a root. versatile like um 
combination of intervals you can have. But it's not the only combination of intervals. Um, you can do, like, let's say, I want to choose a minor second instead. All the other notes will stay the same. No, let's use a minor, se minor seventh instead, okay? that it can give me and also unique characteristics that that can give me i can combine both of them if i want to um crazy that the major scale uses all of the major intervals but the minor scale does not use all the minor intervals well uh there's a few different minor scales and i think um you can look at it in terms of which is darker and which is darkest if you think of it i think major and minor the technically the different kind of modes that we call those are actually don't use all the major and minor intervals each. The major scale, Ionian scale, actually doesn't use the, actually uses the minor fourth, technically. If we think of each pairing as, this is a minor, minor second, major second, minor third, major third, minor fourth, major fourth, how about that? Then, you know, if we actually think of it like that, the Ionian actually uses one half interval, like one lower interval than the other. If we think of these as two fourths, it uses a lower interval. Um, so actually, I compare. You can compare Lydian and Phrygian as actually the 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 brightest and the darkest. We can use Locrian too, but I, I like the fifth. If it doesn't have the fifth, I don't count it as a real note, you know. But technically, we can count Locrian too. Um, yeah, Minnie, I wanted to draw some fan art of your avatar, but I don't know if you have any references for them. The one on the stream is cropped a bit too much. I mean, it's literally just, um, it's just Kimiko. It's kind of just Kimiko from whatever, so. Um, this is also, it does, she, I don't think she even has legs in the, in the VTuber. Does she? Let's see. Oh, there we go. So you can take a snapshot, I guess. <laughs> can I rotate her? Let's see. What is a rotate? Oh, there we go. Showing off, showing off. <laughs> it's really just a little, I like the little black outfit, you know? Um, maybe the black tights would be better. I don't know. Um, oh God, I forgot the little, what are the... Shift, control. I forgot how to move this character around again. Right click, right click. There we go. Nice. Nice. Wants to draw our... The food in the microwave. <laughs> I guess the... <laughs> I was saying microwave food. That's so funny. I guess the minor, second, and tritone or root are the just considered too dissonant to be in a main scale. Well, see, that's the thing. I think that's kind of a lie because the tritone is everywhere in major key music. The major key literally is built so it can take advantage of the tritone in the most in the most useful way possible by it being in the by it being in the dominant chord. You know that perfect fifth interval. If this is a C, right? 
This is the perfect fifth interval. Well, let's build a major chord off of the perfect fifth interval. We take the root, the major third, and the perfect fifth. There we go. What if we play them both all back to forth, back and forth? We have the C major scale and the G major and the G major chord. C major chord. G major. in a billion songs. You can literally build a billion songs based on those two chords. That's how fundamental they are. Yeah, clown music. Well, this is a billion uh, country songs, old hymns, old anything. It's a billion, a billion songs all over the world. He's these two chords. It's that fundamental. But, well, the Ion, you know, uh, you know that perfect fourth we had in the C major scale, right? So we have this perfect fourth to use. We have all this combination of different harmonies. Well, what if we use that perfect fourth over this G major chord? the G major chord, but also this F, which is called the minor seventh, which is technically the minor seventh of the G, because it's two notes right be be um, below the root. Just like we had, if this is the minor seventh from the root C, two notes underneath, then the two notes underneath G is also going to be the minor seventh of G. What does that do? What are the intervals here? Well, if we just take, it's G, B, D, and F. What are these notes? B, uh, B notes and F note. Remember when uh, these two these two notes are uh, an augmented fourth, right? Well, and they're they have uh, seven notes in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's symmetrical. Exactly right. Exactly half. Well, what is the notes in between that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Seven. So there's a tritone inside G7 chord. It sounds so dissonant, but when you surround it with these other intervals, it suddenly sounds not so dissonant anymore. It actually sounds really pleasant and really powerful. Ah. You know the half note jaw theme? Well, the jaws theme is so tense, which means it wants to go back to res resolution. The half notes right beside each other, resolve. This has a resolution. These notes are right beside each other. These notes are right beside each other. So when you have the tritone that uses both the notes that are right beside each other in the scale, ah, they resolve. These two notes resolve to there. The notes half step resolve down, half step, half step resolve up. It sounds so wonderful, so nice. This makes 90% of music functions based on this principle. <laughs> it's called dominant function, which we'll explain later. I have a whole charts. I have whole charts in them. This is just a little teaser. This is just a little test. This is just a this is just a tribute. This is um very 1800s, early 1900s hype music done on piano. It makes me think of old West Saloon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
off track. I really love just talking about all these different little music theory ideas. I just want to really show just how important all these little interval intervals are to really showing how um, much they can. Every little bit of it really add, contributes. The half steps, the half steps contribute. The little minor sevenths, the minor sevenths helps contribute. The augmented, uh, the augmented fourths help contribute. The um, all the different kind of roots we can, we can change the root around. progression. We're changing the roots, basically. When we change the roots of a song, we're basically changing the chord progression. That's the basic way you could think of it. Um, it still carries rigid, residual memory of your brain will remember the last chord, the last few chords, and they'll remember the general uh, shape of all the different notes you play together. Um, but Western music theory basically allows us to play more complicated chord progressions, you know? When a song only has kind of one chord, basically, it's called modal, and that's more non-Western kind of thing. Like... I am playing one root, and I'm playing kind of a traditional folk melody, you know? That's a very typical for um, a lot of uh, non-Western music, because they won't really have much chord-to-chord -chord progressions, you know? They'll have a melody, uh, like a... things over a single chord. That will be basically like that kind of um, color painting. You're playing this sort of fundamental um, fluctuation of air and playing with all the different kind of, kind of different little air, air um, colors you can add on top of that, you know? Like this I'm playing C Mixolydian it's called. most of the major intervals here, but also the minor sevenths instead of the major one. So I'm just picking and choosing. I know you've heard this in a billion songs, you know, this is, um... song. I played that before, but it's just a kind of a funny little... I wish I could remember more uh, Mixolydian sort of uh, things, you know?
So when I just play like blindly, I'm just kind of, again, picking a chord, picking a chord, picking a root, and just picking whatever intervals I want on top, you know? If I'm already playing a minor, major third, I can't really choose this, but you know, that, the, I'll go into all the different rules, kind of build up the notes. Whenever I go into a new a new octave here, I'm kind of just playing the same notes I could up down here, the same notes I could down here. So even when I'm playing this chord, I'm kind of playing the chord up here as well, chord up here as well, chord up here as well, chord well, down here. It's all kind of sharing the same the same frequencies, the same harmonies, the same intervals. If I'm choosing this to play this this perp, this pink note here, I can play it I can play it in all the different octaves. It doesn't really matter where I play it, you know. All I have to do is make sure at least one octave is playing is, is uh, playing the same you know intervals. I'm really only thinking in terms of one octave really. Even when I'm playing up here, I'm playing all this different. I'm playing a yellow note and a purple note, right? Well, that's just like if I was playing it down here, a yellow note and a purple note. It's, a, it's the exact same to me, you know. It's not really any different. It's getting your fingers into go jumping around to all the different octaves, which is pretty difficult sometimes, you know. But harmonically, it's a it's a simple for me, you know. Oh, someone before said um, double plus on good think wise said the augmented fourth isn't usually used over the root, which is very true, except in Lydian. different combinations of different intervals you can use that have such beautiful color. I can play Dorian, let's say. started playing whatever um I'll, I'll go into modal i'll do a little modal exercises next time i think it's a little too much to too much to go over um i guess intervals was enough to really like to uh, describe and stuff <sighs> once you know all these intervals you can kind of make any chord you want any scale any kind of um musical melody will make sense to you because it's just like oh it's just that note you know you kind of know which ones go together let's like uh Never gonna give you up. The first note to that is you have an F major chord. So you have the F, the major third, the perfect fifth. And the melody is gonna be give you up. Well, what is this note? It's a note right behind the root. So you take the root, what's a note right underneath it is the minor, is the major seventh. Secondly, the melody is playing a major seventh. Very jazzy chord. The jazziest, the jazziest notes, intervals you can add to any chord are always the, ma the sevenths. The major or the minor sevenths. This is the minor seventh. Sounds pretty jazzy. The major seventh sounds very lovely. It sounds really tense when it's just the, when it's just the two notes right beside each other. Technically, this is a minor, minor second interval too. It's a half step interval, right? So 
It's really tense, but when you have these other little notes added into it, it softens the blow. It softens the blow a bit, so it can add a little extra color. You can even add extra colors on top. Whenever I add these little extra notes, I'm thinking of the bigger chord I'm basically adding, and bigger scale I'm basically playing, or the biggest chromatic little, you know, intervals I'm playing. It's all kind of the same thing. Like the, the harmonic frequencies are the same thing as the chromatic scale is the same thing as the actual major scale or the modal scale you're using is the same as the chord you're playing. It's the same as the melodies you're playing. The melody is playing the minor, the major seventh. Well, how about you just play it in the chord too? You know, then, then suddenly that's a jazz chord. You're playing the melody note with the chord. It's all kind of the runs together in the same thing. And then um, it goes to the G. The next chord is the G. So it plays a G, major third, perfect, uh, perfect fifth. And the perfect fifth is the melody. So it goes from, lift you up, let you down, lift you up. Is this chord? I'm pretty sure it plays a, basically a version of this. Um, I'll show. I'll tell you in a future lesson how all these different chords are actually kind of related to each other, right? I think I did a little bit last time. Um, it's called uh, functions, and actually simplifies chords so much you realize almost all the chords are kind of the same too. Like you know, there's so much interchangeable different chords you can do. Because again, when you add all these different notes on top of each other. All the, all the chords can kind of become interchangeable. All you're really changing is the real root underneath, you know? I'm just adding this, the first is just the roots. Then that is the major thirds. Let's add the thirds or minor thirds. I'm a little clumsy, so... Let's add the fifths to them. Let's add the sevenths to them. And I can't, I can't really play much else. So I only have these four fingers. So let's, I'm going to add the seconds to them too. Let's try again. Uh, <laughs> I'm so clumsy, but basically like, you can just keep on stacking kind of notes on top of each other, which I'll go into with something called tertiary theory, which is about the, the rules of thirds. So thirds, 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 thirds. You can keep on adding minor and major thirds on top of each other. I'm splitting my hands here. So, um... That's another fundamental little theory. And you realize all these kind of little ideas all work with each other so well. It's kind of beautiful. Music theory is very, very beautiful. And I really love... It's like it helps you express yourself more. Imagine, like, me not knowing, like, I don't know. I would be a worse... I would be less... Um... I would be a lesser person if I didn't know music theory. Put the bunny back in the box. Put the bunny back in the box. Damn. Um, are you calling us lesser people then? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um... What's another little thing I can show? I guess um, I just kind of showed the same pictures I did last time. I guess I could show this this image now because I didn't post this one last time. So I'll, I'll post this one next time. Um, the sixth to seventh. As long as you know the combinations of these and how, you know, you can, again, build it off every note. So the most important thing you can do in trying to figure out a, a song is to figure out what the bass notes are, what the roots are, what the lowest notes are, what the where all the other notes are kind of building on top of. So if you have that note, then the other notes are kind of building off this. But let's say you have, this is the root, but then the kind of other chords are underneath technically, you know? 
know, hi. So you kind of have to do some detective work. It's a little, sometimes it's invisible. Sometimes there's no chords being played. It's just a melody, right? It's just like, even though I'm just playing a melody, there's still a root there that's not being played explicitly, but it's from... a random melody off the top of my head and well there is a root there when you play da, 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 da. if if you're like once you get used to music you realize da, 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 this this specific pattern of half step relation right and then one note one note right there's a there's a whole step full step because there's a note in between that you're skipping so da, 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 da. Well, you can also, the same pattern is found here. Half step, half step, half step. And then whole step, two whole steps, right? So technically that, those two patterns are the same. So where was the melody? If I was just singing it again, like randomly. Da 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 So we have our next two notes. Ah, see this, when you get to da 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 the next note is a half step away, the minus, the major seventh of this, to a whole step. So if we do it from here, so it's different. There we just skip the minor seventh. We skip the major seventh here, right? We skip the half step below. Da 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 da. da. It's different. Oh wait, that's not the right melody. That's not what I was singing before. So it can't be from. To the fifth down here that would have to be this it would have to be the major seventh so that means i know from like deductive reasoning okay so i basically know the whole scale now just from that those little few notes i was playing so it would be this so i know it has to be even though i never played it i know it has to be a g here right because technically i played all these notes now that's a six different notes so all I really need is whether it's that note or that note. And I know it has to be. I know from deductive reasoning, since we already have a perfect fourth, it can't be the augmented fourth. I know this must be the root because there's a minor seventh, uh, a major seventh right below it, a half step, and then the, the minor, the minor, the major six, you know, like I can figure out from deductive reasoning what scale it is just from knowing the melody. Because this kind of specific pattern of notes can only really happen in a C major scale sort of thing. And from this as a root. If it was like this as a root instead, then there should be a minor second below it. You know, the half step below. I mean, the whole step below, right? A space in between. So that's the sort of thing that made learning songs like extremely easy. Because you realize all these songs use the same patterns. Just like reading a book, you won't see words that don't exist, right? The 99% of the words there will be words that already existed before the cat went through the fence those are all words that existed before so all these kind of patterns of notes already also exist you know you know and i know like i know the chords that would go underneath that melody too even though i wasn't playing any i was just singing a random melody i know what chords can go underneath I can like figure out all sorts of different kind of patterns that could go with these notes because this can be any of these notes can be its own kind of thing like a I can make it sad I can make it like kind of you can kind of have so much fun with it how about with um, never gonna give you up uses uh, this chord in the beginning, right? The minor seventh. Well, okay. How about I do that too? Ah, uh, it's a little work quite so much. Let's uh, figure, let's um, fudge it up a bit. Dun, dun. You can 
how you play that note. Yeah, that works. Or I can play these, these two chords over and over, F and G. different uh, little melodies there. It's kind of repeating this a little bit like that. So um, you can kind of play with all these little patterns as much as long as you know the intervals that are being played and stuff and how it goes with whatever chord progression you want to play, right? And then so I know like all the different chords that work um, mostly. I still mess up. My fingers still mess up sometimes. But sometimes I go, oh, I wonder how this note would work against this note, you know? So there's still a lot of experiment, experimentation going on and, and fun stuff. Um, there's so much fun things to do with music. Like it's like smashing together different Lego blocks, like thinking how, what different Lego blocks can go together, you know? Can I put these different Lego blocks together with that? goes with the bluesy kind of feel like I know what what you know, so much like allowances to what kind of intervals you can play with that will give a certain sound if you want to play with you know use it both a major third minor a major and minor thirds you'll sound have a bluesy feeling because that's what major that's what blues music does <laughs> piano blues player but you know guitar on guitar it's very thing ah so this is just basically how you can combine all sorts of intervals together to make wonderful painted sounds it's like painting a tapestry and you can combine the different intervals together you know so you can make the song something like this like the 
major kind of things or how about you change it to minor you paint the you just switch to intervals whatever intervals like oh my major third you switch to minor third you know um major six you switch to minor six that sort of thing so i can do any any you can start from any root let's, let's say let's play the in g again It's the exact same pattern you're playing. You're just kind of playing, uh, choosing again from G, you're playing major, uh, major second, major third, blah, 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 just like you wouldn't see. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, whatever. Um, A, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Honestly, I get mess, I get mixed up all the time too. Like, sometimes this, this, this scale kind of messes me up because I, I, oh, I played the wrong note there. Oh, I'm kind of not used to that one as much. So a lot of these black, the, uh, the black um, keys, I'm a little, I'm a little rustic on, you know. Um. Oh, I messed up, but that's as much as I can play a fourth and fifth. So a lot of the sort of black uh, black keys, I'm a little I'm a little rustic console. But it's the same principle. Like you can start on any kind of note, and as long as you know the roots, as long as you know the root and intervals, you can build up on top of it to get to the root. Then you can build any chord you want. Like if you know the formulas for all the different chords. This is F sharp. Um, Minor, I can do F sharp major, F sharp major with the added um, my major seven. How about with an augmented fourth? Ooh, what's that? I know this is Lydian because I have the major third and the minor seven, uh, major seventh and a sharp fourth or whatever. I have all the different intervals I need to build that kind of feeling. Hello, hello. I'm just laser noodling again on, on modes. When I say all these different words, like Lydian, Locrian, Phrygian, whatever, all these different words are just, just like I said, major scale, like Ionian. This is one of them. There's a different Greek names for all of them. We'll go into them another time. Um, Oh, I think I probably filled this. I think I had enough of a of a big lesson for this, right? <laughs> I probably did a little too much. Um, so I guess I'll show off a different chart just for fun, um, but I won't post just yet. Um, should it be this? Oh, I have to finish. Oh, the tertiary. I have to finish this functions thing a lot. Lydian cycle. Um, should be a modes one. Modes one. Hmm. Here we go. Hmm. Which one should I show? I don't think I rendered it right properly. Uh, oh, here we go. No, that's not it. Where is it? Here we go. This is another random chart I made. <laughs> so it's basically like all the different thirds. So this is like two different scales. Like you have, you know, if we stack it by thirds. Like a Lydian chord, right? As long as we have seven notes, we can make the scale, you know? Or how about a C Dorian I can play? Well, it's a C Dorian chord. You can play all the notes at once of the scale. You can play them in order. 
or you can split them up and play them on the different octaves, right? Instead of playing it down here, you can play it up here. You can kind of switch it around. Maybe you play this one down there and this one up here or something, you know? It's kind of fun. That's super cool. Girlfriend was late through because the trucker used the wrong entrance. Aww. Dispatcher, I guess. So that is another chart I have. It's very, it's very cool way to look at chords, like see Phrygian. It's technically a C Phrygian chord because it has all the notes of the Phrygian scale. Very intense. Um, oh, C Mixolydian is very fun. Very nice scale, you know. So you can have all these kind of different flavors of chords that are kind of just, again, stacking up all these different intervals, and each interval has its own characteristic. It's wonderful just choosing different intervals that can add on to a root, right? Out of the fifth, this is the perfect fourth, this is the minor seventh, this is the major second. This does sound so cool. How about these right by each other, you know? If you listen to uh, Alan Holdsworth's music, he does this kind of stuff a lot, just like painting different notes and intervals in a big wall on top of each other. Yeah, Mixolydian is really, really nice. I love Mixolydian. It's probably like the fun. It's the most bluesy scale. I have a whole lesson planned on just Mixolydian blues, uh, pentatonic. You've probably heard the word pentatonic before. Penta means five. Tonic means ton, tone. So eight tone, pentatone. Um, hey, pentatone. Um, uh, what other charts do I have? Most of them are grayscale. Ah. <sighs> uh. Well, this is another one I made recently. Uh, so this is all the different um, modes you can have and how they change from each one. So it starts from Lydian, Ionian, Mixolydian, then Dorian, Aeolian, and Phrygian. And then it goes Locrian. It's kind of the odd, the black sheep of the group, of the crew, you know? Um, this is, again, just another, a little, just a little um, charts I make. You can see how each the little arrows show how each note changes from each from each um, mode, and they get lower and lower and lower. Is down they get more and more notes get flatted as it goes darker and darker. So that's the thing. The harmonies are getting crunched down. The functions are getting crunched down. I mean the frequencies are getting crunched down. You know. So uh, that was two hours. Two hours of music theory talk. Um. It feels like I'm still just uh, either saying too much or saying too little. But once you sort of um, see how all these little building blocks of like you have half steps, half steps, whole steps, you have all these different intervals of major thirds, minor thirds, um, you have major sevenths, major sevenths and stuff, you can just build off of the roots. and. If you change the root around, sort of, you get different interval patterns that can um, change how these notes sort of interact. So let's say I did... playing one note technically its interval was changing constantly throughout each each thing that I played that's almost how teaching goes for some people it isn't nearly enough for some it's way overwhelming and it's like impossible to hit the sweet spot where everyone feels the most satisfied they can well especially since this isn't like private lessons right 
I can't do one-on-one -on -one with someone to really show. And you do want a little bit of a taste for what's to come, you know, what's later. Um, just so they know what what is a... What more exciting things are waiting around the corner for them? I struggled so hard with tutoring people's throat high school and college. I'm sure groups of four and five. Yeah, even with groups of four or five, I'm sure that's really impossible. If it's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's sort of just like ridiculous. I don't know how teachers do it for real. <laughs> uh, I would do groups of four or five. Ugh. <laughs> Improvisation is I'm literally just choosing choosing those uh, intervals that I know work. Usually the third and the fifth, the major third or minor third, and whatever the perfect fifth is. <coughs> like I've played this. That's a little melody, right? Well, it happens over C, so this is the perfect fifth of C, perfect fifth of C, and it trills a little bit to the, to the major six, which just sounds nice, and then it goes down to the perfect fourth. Chord changes to the F chord, the F major chord. So when it does to the major six, the major six of C, technically it's the major third of F. It's just like it. So I'm playing major third to the root, and then down to the minor seventh of F, the major seventh of F, but also. To this note, the 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 um, the D, and I know the D is a perfect fifth of the G chord, so it's probably going to be G. And then same thing. I can just do that sort of thing. When I do this, it's a major third of this F chord, and then it goes down to the the major the perfect fifth of the G chord. And then it goes to this note, which is going to go right up to the root back again, right? So there's all these kind of intervallic uh, relationships between all these different chords. And that's how you could build melodies around. When it goes like this, it's the major third of that chord. I'm just like playing between. This is the F chord. And this is uh, the sort of G chord I'm playing back to the C. So when all these kind of melodies, like uh, the first notes of, of Green Greens. This is really just a C major chord. So it like, it just fits. It fits the chord that's playing, playing underneath. It's just, it's a random melody. The melodies almost always follow chord tones, which I guess I'll go into next time. I'll play a bunch of song examples next time, and I'll show how intervals can relate to the different gravities that may be being made. And I'll play a different bunch of different modes. I hate that I didn't go into modes more last time. I just kept on delaying it, and it delayed the dominant function lessons too. Um... choir this notes <laughs> the anticipation the anticipation because these are half steps so it wants to go wants to fix it somehow from back to the root that's the dominant function in 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 in, in action 
integration to two former gifted program kids, one normal student and one or two that barely gone to college. Oh no, that's like the worst expanse you can get, especially the former gifted kids. Aw. Um, that's, that's me, right? No, I was never part of it. <laughs> I should do math lessons on Twitch as the school year goes along in calculus. I could totally get an audience. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm glad I can get a little audience just listening to me and, you know, have a little, have a little uh, rants on music theory, even if I go a little overboard sometimes. I'm very sorry if I, if I go a little too much, if I go a little too into it. My friends keep telling me, keep it bite-sized. Keep it to like an hour, just like do, or half an hour. Just do a very little, small little lessons, you know? Or it'll get burnt out. And, you know, it's probably true. I'll try to keep it shorter next time. <laughs> next time will be a lot of different fun songs. kind of music has a sweeping emotion to it when I play when I play those kind of things I'm playing the minor six to the minor seven is, is root which gives it a certain all major chords which gives it that kind of triumphant feeling big all these major chords in a row are very exciting triumphant literally what that sound is so when you have all these kind of major key intervals major keys give have a lot of space in them because remember minor minor keys minor chords have are closer to the root they're closer to roots so they have less space to breathe a, mi a major key has more space to breathe it has all these extra notes in between from the root so when you have a bunch of major chords in a row there's suddenly a lot of space a lot of space being made that isn't really um the same for um, minors, minors, uh, minor chords. And this sounds kind of awkward, but um, it's the most space, you know, between each note, all all whole steps. Um. So, anyways. You get a lot uneasy, very open, very weird and airy, very Lydian, very uh, dreamlike, very unnerving. So um, all these sort of triumphant feelings and songs that you like, or these kind of creepy feelings and songs that you like, or these angry feelings and songs that you like. It's probably like something Phrygian. If it's something dreamy, it's probably like... I'm using a, ma a ma uh, major seventh with augmented fourth, maybe, you know, as a major maybe something a little more unnerving than that you know something it's using all these kind of intervals and certain patterns that are all kind of they're kind of predictable it's kind of predictable and it can kind of work with them just like you want to you know paint the blue sky it's going to be you know it's going to be blue but you can do a ton with it you can paint it in such a colorful way um it's still going to be a sky for the most part but you can express yourself with it with these kind of building blocks little lego building blocks you know it's your it's your uh, palette, it's color palette. You know, Palette Town. I'll go into court, yeah, songs next time. I'll do. A, I'll analyze a bunch of songs and show you how they all just kind of the same building blocks, and they all color themselves with different kind of ways. You know, and I'll show you how easy it is to actually figure out the notes of a song. You know, 
it's actually really easy because there's only a few a few possible choices for every given every given melody, every given kind of chord. Um, anyways, let's read. Let's read chat. Let's read chat. I don't think I'll play Final Fantasy VIII today. <laughs> Probably not. I guess my thing was a lie. I should have done music and chatting, right? Um, maybe I'll play a little bit. It's only eleven o'clock, right? Um, I just been talking chatting so long. I should have a little. A little drink. A drinking break, a water break. I love math. If I wasn't super anti-social and awkward, I'd honestly go back to school. Ah, uh, I would love. I mean, God, I wish I was good at math. I used to be a math whiz kid as a kid. I was like the science kid, the math kid. I was so smart with everything like that. And now I'm like, uh, this makes gives me a headache. <laughs> I can't really think about it anymore. Now I'm suddenly into music and art and stuff. Um. But I, I guess I'm still a little autistic about my knowledge of music stuff, too, you know? It's all of the... I, I do know, like, the mathematical facts of it. You don't really need to think about the math too much. You don't need to really think about what is the exact frequency. I think it's kind of useless to think about that sort of stuff. You don't need to know the ratio of frequencies or whatever. You just need to know that there that there are frequencies happening. When I'm playing this, you know, there's, there's waves that you're... The electronic signals that your headphones are getting, your speakers are getting, are literally the, you know, ones and zeros of what the sound wave is going, of what the sound wave is doing. It's going up or down. So it's literally, you know, that's what, that's what it's telling you. And it's managing to create that sound wave through the vibrating air. And so it's showing all these different intervals that you're playing, all the specific kind of sound waves that they're making. The little um, electrical signal is, is telling you them, or the sound wave, the waves of air in front of your speakers, or in front of your little headphones right into your ear, literally making those kind of vibrations, and that's what makes, um, that's what makes music. Whether it's coming from a human voice, a frog ribbiting, a bird chirping, a foghorn in the Alps, um, a car horn in the, in the Bronx, um, uh, beluga whale, a big uh, whale in the ocean, a volcano erupting, um, every single thing that vibrates sound creates a musical note, <laughs> even if it's really rough or hard to determine. Usually, you know, if it's a single tone, it's like, yeah, you can, we can analyze bird song. You can take a bird song, you can slow it down to really like try to get what notes it's playing and you could play it on piano. I, I used to... Something like it will be something like that, really, really high pitch. Something like it will be a certain specific intervals, just like in on piano. It'll be obviously a little more slide. It'll be slides so like there'll be slides and stuff and weird bends and stuff going on. But it'll still be notes. It'll still be musical notes, and a lot of them will probably be intervals like major fifth or perfect fifths and stuff like that, and little little flourishes. Um, you can kind of have the same universal music intervals like everywhere, you know. Almost all cultures use a fifth. Actually, I think basically every single culture uses the perfect fifth. Um, a lot of them love either pentatonic melodies, so they love like those, or they love uh, the minor third with the major seventh, with the minor sevenths, and the uh, still with the fifths. Like they all share almost all music everywhere all around the world throughout uh millions of years thousands of years or whatever they kind of are all using the same intervals together you know whether it's western or eastern or video game music or jazz or uh math punk crust rock or you know um future funk whatever nobody's inventing new pitches <laughs> nobody's inventing new colors nobody's really you know that's not really how art is made, right? It's more like we're all using these same kind of universal pitches together. Um, and that's why music is lovely. That's why I don't think anyone who says like, you know, video game music is not real music or anything weird, dumb cliche like that, you know, it's really dumb. So you can listen to some classical music right now on Spotify or YouTube and you'll find the same pitches. The same pitches, almost all the same chord progressions as all the music you love in 
video games and pop and rock music, whatever. It'll be all the same stuff. It'll sound. It'll, be, it'll have different sound effect. It'll be played with different instruments. It won't have distortion in it or a drum beat. But it'll be the same music. It'll be the same intervals. It's all universal intervals. That's what makes it beautiful. Um, that's why, you know, I don't really talk about rhythm too much or like drums or everything like that. Um, rhythm is very important for my future lessons on motifs, late motifs. And I'll teach you about notation too. Um, but other than that, it's really just about um, how intervals are universal. The people might have different tunings, but basically everyone enjoys like almost the same like kind of groupings of intervals, you know. So, um, oh, I think we're getting tired. Oh, hmm. oh my, oh my. Let me read more of the messages. I'm one of those former gifted kids. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you find it interesting. I'm so so glad. I'm really really so 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 glad. Um, I love that people can just, I, I, I wish everyone like knew how intervals and stuff work. Like what I've done, like almost since I started listening to music seriously is like, I would love singing harmonies along to whatever song I was listening to, especially like Queen songs, but any, any song, like stroke songs or something. If it was like, he seemed impressed by the way he came in, I was trying to harmonize with it. Right. So. I don't know how that song goes, but, um, what are the chords to that? Let's see. It's probably, yeah. Okay. It's B minor to E major. Yeah. See. So, like, you can harmonize with it by going uh, up by thirds. A little high, but, you know, you can kind of, well, let's just take it lower then. Um... just figure out your own uh, harmonies to any song you listen to by just singing like a third above if you can recognize the scale and stuff and you realize all these kind of songs all use the same kind of scales and stuff it's actually pretty simple um it's pretty simple i mean it's pretty like predictable after a while which makes it fun because you can you can involve yourself into singing you can like just jump in because you know how the intervals work and stuff and you can add more and more little flourishes and then i started just writing my own songs where i started doing that for my own music. So it's like, oh, okay, now I know how this all works and stuff. Um, so that's why I love intervals. I wish I could like harmonize with people in real life. Like I had like some kind of like choir or something. That would be fun. Um, choirs are so beautiful because it's literally just without any instruments, you can make kind of just use the intervals to harmonize with each other. The bass can sing these two notes just like a tuba does. Doing that it's all voices which is just so beautiful it's so beautiful that instead of you can't just cheat by all playing all the notes yourself right you have to have one person for each note which makes it so cool to me you know um i think a lot of confusion comes from teachers oversimplifying it sometimes yes i'm also i also don't like people oversimplifying things that's why i don't just start with a c major scale and that is useful and I do start with it technically, but I don't just stay with that and then try to constantly add things onto the major scale. I'm starting actually with the most complicated thing technically, the chromatic scale, and working backwards and showing you whatever whatever combination of, of other notes you can have, you can uh, make. Minor scale, it's still all coming from the chromatic scale. You're just picking and choosing different notes from the chromatic scale. Um, the way actual music history actually started was from you know very simple 
and then adding more notes in between and stuff. But that's a little oversimplification too, you know. Um, that's just again more of technology sort of stuff. Um, indefinite indefinite integrals can get used interchangeably with antiderivatives, and they shouldn't. See, I don't even know what those two things are. Um, then when I try to take the step to learn, oh, how do I use inter integrals to find the area underneath x and y values? It gets all jumbled. There's so many problems with this with music theory because um, they they start with these simple ideas like, oh, just learn to C major scale. And they say, like, wait, wait, what if I want to learn to F major scale? It's like, oh, that's too complicated. Like they don't even really teach them. It just gets too complicated. With my method, it's all universal. It doesn't matter what what note you start at, it doesn't matter what, what note you want to start at, it doesn't matter. You just, this note, okay, so you want to make the major scale, so my major second, major third, perfect fourth, uh, perfect fifth, my, uh, major sixth, minor, uh, major seventh, there we go. literally a major scale like any any other major scale there's nothing special about c major really it's just one of the notes one of the roots if you change the root uh, to c sharp you can make the, you can make another major scale a major scale is a pattern the pattern of notes you want to do different intervals you know you want to choose a major the major second the major third blah 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 that is what the major scale is d you can do the same thing The actual notes you choose, like, you know, like knowing all the names of the notes, that's important. It's not that important. <laughs> it is important, but especially with DAWs nowadays, you don't really need to know all the names of all the notes. Um, you do need to know, like, if you're playing D major, you know, this D major chord, that you're not playing, like, a random chord, like, here up it without intentionally knowing why you're doing that. Like, if I'm playing, um, uh, like, do I know what kind of sound that is? If... If I'm just in a DAW and just placing random chords everywhere, you know, that could get into a lot of trouble. So the most important thing is that you know what the notes you're playing. Um, if you don't know the specific names, obviously you should know the specific names, but so much of music theory knowledge comes from notation stuff. And notation is all about knowing the names of the notes. Oh, what symbol is that little sharp? So you need to know that makes an F sharp, except when... The little sign on the left is a different little combination of sharps and flats, and then you need a different clef that sometimes changes which notes mean what. And then it's like they don't even know what F what they don't even know what F scale is yet. They don't even know what a major scale is. They don't know what a Dorian they never even know, know what a Dorian scale is. It's completely outside their frame of uh, reference. So it's like what what are you really teaching here? You're teaching them how to read notation, but you're not really teaching them music theory. And I want to teach people music theory, you know. I want to teach people how to play, how to play songs. Maybe they'll go to like ultimate guitar and look at chords for a favorite song they like by I don't know Bob Dylan or something. And they go like, I want to learn this song. I don't really know exactly how to play it, but I want to learn it. And then they can learn it, even if it's just the chords um, above above the lyrics, you know. Um, I'll teach all you guys how to read a chord chart too. Uh, then when you try to take the step to learn, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is that the things they teach are like. It's also over it's over complicated and also not even what they trying to teach you know it's basically trying to teach a different completely different set of skills than what the student might actually want to learn um i need to study math yeah i'm actually really bad at it nowadays i was good at math see like even in high school like, i could feel like i could do math but then after a while i feel like my brain just got fuzzy it felt like i was zombie dying when i was doing math problems and I felt like I'm really tired of math like I want to play music I want to like do something fun <laughs> I was good at it for a while still but then I just always say I'm bad at it now but it's like I have to switch my brain into a different kind of mode and I can be good at it you know if I do that but I also I don't want to do that so it's like that was pretty dumb of me you know I, I should have stayed smart like that maybe I could program nowadays um, but it just sort of, sh it just starts to make, make me feel depressed. It's basically depression. It's basically like I have to depress my brain in order to think about math. <laughs> if you're really autistic about music, you would start dropping the sin function for each note's frequency in meters. Well, now the thing about chromatics, the chromatic scale, the thing about 
Western theory is that you don't need to think about that stuff. You can, you already have the notes that you have, you know, so it's really wonderful little set of Lego blocks for you. You don't need to think about really the math behind it. You just need to know there is math behind it. There is obviously the inner workings of stuff and that helps you universalize again like when you play i don't know i could play a little ugh, i have a little thumb calling by but it's kind of fun it's like relaxing it's very out of tune because it fell on the floor a few times same notes it's everyone all the instruments use the same the same notes as, as each other it may be a tiny bit off tune but basically it'll still be the same intervals i could play it on guitar Like, you can kind of play the same music everywhere, as long as you know the intervals. And there's only 12 different intervals you need to learn. So, it doesn't matter what music it is. It could be a harmonica, on a thumb kalimba, on a whistling. You can sing it out. It's all it's all still the same frequencies. That's the, that's the important thing to know about frequencies. Knowing the order of the ratios is useful. Yes, I think that's, that's important. Well, um, what? P8, P5? Wait, what do you mean by order of ratios? Is that um I don't I don't think about the harmonic series really ever. I don't think about that. I know the fifth is important in the harmonic series. Basically when you sing a note that isn't just a pure sine wave, it's gonna have multiple other reverberations that are other pitches. And it's almost always gonna include the fifth and a few other notes, you know, higher up that are really hard to listen to, but you can actually hear them in every every sort of tone that has a really rich full tone that's usually playing other notes other pitches that aren't just the, the one note it's actually playing other higher pitches that are really imperceptible but that's why it sounds fuller that's why like a big cello sounds really full it's actually playing multiple notes because they're all the one note is bouncing around in the big in the bare barrel chest of the cello or a big barrel chest of your own voice of your own head reverberating around and it's making it's turning into other pitches remember how pitches if they shrink together or widen, they make different, they make higher pitches. Well, that's happening when you bounce all the pitches around in your head or in your chest or in, or in a violin body or in a guitar body. It's actually multiplying the different, the one note into several higher pitches and other things. So it's making a wider, a wider, fuller range of very low, low volume, uh, higher notes. It's called the harmonic series. So every, everyone... Everyone can do it. If they sing really well and you know, like, you know, when you sing so loud, you can uh, crack glass, a little cartoon joke, you know, that's like basically those higher pitches that are actually like imperceptibly vibrating glass. You know, you ring your um, finger around a wine glass. It's doing those higher pitches. Uh, overtone series, I think. Overtone, that's what it's called or something like that. I don't know. I don't really think about it that too much. It's just something to keep in mind again. Minwan is a little autistic, but I'm like bad with women, time, money, decision making, worth ethic, long distance running and making cereal. But she is in like a cool way. I'm uh, also bad at all those things too. <laughs> I eat cereal with the milk first, by the way. I'm glad I listened to that Godforsaken podcast in 2020. It brought me to Music Theory Ladies Team. Ah, ex Christian, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. What a like crazy time that was COVID, right? But I'm glad I can do this sort of thing. And I, people actually appreciate it. All this the weird nerdy stuff I know, but I can't really put into practice properly. Hopefully I just get the, my music finished. I have like, I don't know, I have like 10 albums I need to work on in the future, but I don't know how I'll have time for them when they make, they take so much work. <laughs> um, someone who had a bass tenor and alter range in a singing choir made me want to cry. Oh, wow. That's incredible range. 
I took guitar lessons as a teenager, and all the music theory stuff was by rote, which means it went totally over my head. I, a joke I have about guitar music theory is that a lot of guitarists don't know what an E note is. They know what an E string is, but they don't know what an E note is. They don't know that it's called the E string because it plays an E note. The E pitch. It plays the pitch of E that we call E in the chromatic series. It plays the E note. So that's what it's called the E string, the D string, the G string. That's why they're called those strings because they actually play the specific notes just like on a piano. It's all the same notes. All these instruments play the same notes as each other. That's what makes it that makes it that's what makes bands work that's what make orchestras work um that's what makes music work i'll probably buy a toshiba piano and try to learn exclusively by playing piano ghibli music hey that's a good idea oh you should play uh yoshi matsu listen to some yoshi matsu to some shi matsu there we go hey then i've always been more of a reading gifted kid hello personified i can't stay but i have to pop in to support the oomph ah Bye, 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 bye. Sorry I'm so slow with reading messages. I've always been more of a reading and write, writing gifted kid. I, have like, always was a big reader because I needed to drown my... I needed to drown my overactive brain when I was trying to sleep. So I start, I, I also read in class. I would finish homework before the school... Before the, I actually went home. I would finish, like, in school. So I just, like, had nothing to do. So I would just read books. The teachers would get mad at me that it was, like, you know, not... Not to, I, I was finished all the work. I finished all the work they gave me, so I would just read like crazy. I would read everything they had in the classrooms, you know? Um, so I read a lot when I was a little kid. Um, but I was mostly a math science kind of kid, you know? I didn't really have art anywhere around the house or any, like at school a lot. There wasn't really a lot of art stuff, so I don't know. There was no real reason to get good at it. I wanted to have good report cards. That's what I want. I want to be proud of like big A's everywhere. And you can't really do that with art, really, you know? So the reason why I loved getting into guitar so much is because I didn't have to think about report cards or grades or anything. It was just, oh, I can just, like, express myself. I can do something cool. I can, do, like, make cool sounds with my guitar. I could like, play songs. That I, like, I never, like, had that Put before, really. Put the bunny know? back Put in the, the bunny box. bunny back in the box. I almost dated it purely off the fact he was a mathematician. Oh, my God. Dad's. Dude's love language was teaching me higher level stuff than he thought I would like. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, like, I know actual mathematicians. One of my best friends is a mathematician. Um, living, uh, working in Japan now, teaching kids. And it's like, that's like totally, I can never do that. I can never, like, love math, you know? He, like, loves it. He got really into the theory. He, like, he busted his balls over it, like, to really study and become, like, a real mathematician, so... That's pretty impressive. I could never do that with my Ina math. The math was always like, you know, just, it was just work to me. But then when I got into music, I really like, oh, oh, this is incredible. I got literally really into it, just like math. Unfortunately, you can't make money off of music theory <laughs> like you can math. Um, hope you're having a nice evening. Oh, Nano, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Sorry. I'm so slow with my reading chat. Um. I think right now I want to learn piano and guitar. Kalimba always seemed cool as well. Oh, Kalimba, yeah, Kalimba, it's just a toy, you know? I got a little toy instrument because I wanted to make some little, little cool little recordings, you know? But it's not, it's not, you know, get a, get a real instrument, you know? <laughs> oh, this is so out of tune. Da, 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 da. of polyphonics where it's where you sing multiple notes at the same time yeah i learned how to sing like three or four pairs of notes but holy hell this is hard to sing ever wait what like a single person sings multiple notes i know about throat singing i don't think i don't know about polyphonics that's insane 
Overtone series the same thing. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Harmonic series and <laughs> overtone are the same, okay. See, I'm really bad at, like, the actual terminology sometimes. Because there's so much homonyms and synonyms and homophones, or whatever they're called. And <laughs> I don't even know what those are. Um, and music. Like, if I play something like this, you know... this is, I don't know, a flat, it's a flat ninth chord, or it's a minor second chord, or it's a altered, altered seven chord. There's all sorts of stupid, stupid names for them, and all the different kinds of, like, jazz has some different names for them. Classical has different names for them. All, all, everyone has different names for them, you know? So, it gets, makes things more confusing, you know? Um, not that it's bad. Everyone will always have different terminologies for these sorts of things, but um, it makes it hard, difficult to wrap your head around when you're trying to learn it. Mm. I'm bad at that. How it feels to be autistic in one sentence. Ha! Huh? Overtones are just resonant frequencies above the fundamental one. Yes. Again, it's just the reverberations ha increasing the increasing the frequencies. So you just need to you don't need to I don't think about it. It's not like, oh I when I play the C I'm really playing multiple notes. It, it is important to know. I don't really know what notes it's really making. I don't really care too much. Um but um, it is important to at least know the perfect fifth. That's at least important. Um, when I think about making music, I'm thinking about making little melodies with the chord progressions I like. That sort of thing, you know? So I don't need to think about the math too much. The math is like, it's important to keep it in mind, though. Just like color theory. Like, oh, you want to use a red paint. Well, it has a certain light frequencies, you know, that affects the eyes. That's a sort of basic thing, you know? You don't need to know the exact frequency or whatever, but it's it's important to know those kinds of things. Um, I'm used to do my homework and passing period between classes before the class was about to start. Wow. <sighs> I would get bad grades because I wouldn't show my work for math, you know? Even though I always got the right answers, the teachers would get so mad at me because I didn't show the answers, even though there was... This is before the internet. This is before... I wasn't allowed to use calculators and stuff, but I still got the answers right because I, I could do them in my head. But they would get so mad at me, even though I wasn't cheating, and I could show it right in front of them, and they get so mad at me, and it's like, all right. Then I had to show my answers each time, and it would be like, take up, you know, the entire page. And I just started hating math after that, like, again. Like, I, I feel I could do, like, long division or whatever as a little kid, like, super easily uh, without even thinking about it. Um, but they get so mad at me, you know. Um, can make money off teaching music theory. I don't think so. Tutors and streams like this can build an audience. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying not to think too hard. I'm just trying to have fun here, you know. Um, I don't have any kind of like music like degrees or uh conservatory like any kind of grade level things. I can't become like an actual teacher, teacher, you know. So. Um, but I hope, hopefully, this is at least fun for you guys. It's fun for me. I love just being able to, being able to. I love just noodling around like that over a C major chord. It's so fun. different across several countries yeah different countries different everything it's all it's sort of like well just don't think about that stuff i use i say like half step whole step which is you know sometimes it's called semitone and whole tone you know whole tone semitone same thing half whole step half step same thing technically even my major second minor second right but that's only if this is a root um 
Same problem with not showing work. It almost felt like I had an algorithm in my brain and couldn't even explain or think about how I got to the answer. Half notes. Well, half notes are... Yeah, minims, that's so weird. I've never even heard that from my British friends online, you know? So it's very weird. Tito is a major skill. So if you ever want to know whatever what, what the major scale is of any note, just think of any note like do do. So do you do the sound of music song from. Do, do, re, mi, fa, so, ra, ti, do. It's a little too high. I can't sing that loud this this late in the night. Um, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You can sing, you get figure out any major scale by just singing the do, re, mi, do, re, mi scale. Um, do, do, a deer, a female deer. That would be. The major second, the major third, along with the root. So do a deer, a female deer. That's a major third difference. Female deer. So what was that? Do do. Major third. At least it's minor third.
min is half notes. A minim? A min mod? It was funny, I was listening to a random song in like a cafe and it was like, this is some guitar music, you know, with some easy listening. And I noticed like, wait, this is using, this is, that's a sharp fourth. Like I heard the sharp fourth. Technically this is like, it was like this, like. to like two different chords like that and it's like wait I recognize it like it was playing I knew what the root was I didn't I couldn't say I couldn't tell if what note it was it might have been a C might have been an E might have been a whatever it could have been any note but I noticed that it was a sharp fourth it was like maybe in guitar it was probably E like this uh, wait wait some kind of like these uh, cool chords and I could tell oh that was a sharp fourth oh that was a fifth you know I could like hear it you know so I think my ear has gone good enough that I could like just pick up on intervals like that and I think if you listen to my streams enough you'll be able to hear the intervals too I'll like describe all the different chords I'm playing all the different modes I'm playing all the different intervals I'm playing all the different kind of things I'm playing and I realize I'm just playing the same kind of like pocket full of tricks, pocket full of goodies, almost every time. This one is just a full, what, a C major 13 chord, because I'm playing every chord, every Lydian chord, you know, C major sharp, you know, 13 sharp, blah, 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 whatever. The thing I'm annoying about thing about chord names is they're all based on the Ionian mode, so any change from the Ionian mode is suddenly like the basis, you know. So this would have to be called sharp. Four, not sharp fourth, even though it's an augmented fourth, it's called a, a sharp eleventh now, when it's part of a scale, because that's a whole different, that's a tertiary harmony thing. It all makes sense, you know, it all does make sense. It's just a lot of, a lot of terminology rules. But again, you don't need to know the names of, the names of anything, if you can know what kind of sound this is.
Haji's funeral. Ah, ha ha. Sad and ruined music. Well, a lot of soundtrack music uses a lot of these modal ideas I'm using. They need to know all the different intervals. Usually the good composers do because they know how they can affect people emotionally. This is why I'm interested in intervals. This is why I wanted to learn about music theory in the first place because I wanted to write music that evoked certain emotions. I remember I always thought about like I want to write like a song about like I don't know like a dream sequence like how do you write a dream sequence just like pop chords you can't really do it you need to have this is like going back first chorus first chorus like I want to like a progressive like a progressive song that goes through different different themes and you can kind of do that with you can do that with intervals if you know oh minor second that gives a certain feeling minor third that gives a certain feeling augmented fourth that gives a certain feeling sort of perfect fourth gives a certain kind of feeling like they all give these certain kind of emotions that you can use to express a certain mood that's not just random chords underneath a story a lyric story you know if I wanted to make like an actual like instrumental song I would um that's not just carried on by the lyrics you know I need to do um like oh I want to I want to show how uh, um like a winter a winter a winter's day what does that sound like um it is a winter's day it is a snowy outside it's like well does that really sound like snowy it doesn't really sound like it to me the lyrics are saying it's snowy but the music isn't really saying it's snowy it sounds like a christmas song sure but there's nothing really to the music that actually is expressing this kind of mood uh, what is the feelings behind a winter? Like, is it a really snow? Is it a bitter snowstorm? Is it a really bright, sunny, calm, no snow, but just fresh snow on the ground? There's a whole bunch of different emotions you can do. But what do you do if you don't have the words? You can't just cheat your way using lyrics because lyrics aren't music. <laughs> lyrics isn't like a music intervals. Music isn't like if if lyrics were that important to music, there wouldn't be any like you know classical music. There wouldn't be any, um, you know, people would just sing everything. They wouldn't bother bothering to play in the instruments underneath, which is basically what's happening, you know, because people aren't really thinking about what the music underneath is really expressing properly, other than, again, the sound effects. They're not really thinking about, like, is the mood of the music itself reflecting what you want the words to say, you know? I think lyrics should be both like it should obviously be working together but a lot of people just kind of forget the music and just use the words themselves to express the meaning which is kind of cheating it's like you know you're drawing a painting but you're not really thinking about the colors it's like yeah whatever colors it's like the colors are supposed to reflect the overall mood of the piece and uh, what you're trying to express that's why i say a lot of musicians aren't really musicians they're just kind of lyricists they're just kind of lyricists like you know, um, Taylor Swift, you know, is called herself the poet, you know, the poet, new album. And it's like, well, is she really thinking about the music, music too much? Well, obviously not. She's just like a pop diva, you know, for fun. But um, I think a lot of like other musicians, it's like, you know, hobby musicians or rock musicians, other kind of musicians to think more seriously about, you know, you're not just playing a G chord. Oh, I need to play a G chord, an E minor chord or whatever. You're playing like, you know, you're playing, you're supposed to be playing music, you know, um, not just a backing, not just a backing track to whatever words you want to say, you know, if you want to play a backing track to words you want to say, just sing some poetry over like, uh, some public domain loops, like who cares, right? Um, music, music theory to make cool music. Now I'm trying to manipulate the fuck out of you subconsciously. Well, yeah, that's what, like, uh, it's, um, it's actual intervals you're using to um, invoke a certain mood, like the Star Wars themes or something. They do that. Like all the big uh, famous kind of themes, they all play with these intervals in specific ways. And they use interval patterns to drill into your head. I don't 
don't really know how to play this song. But again, like the kind of intervals you're using are important, are so important. And the way that they, that's a way different mood than, this is a different mood. If I start a song going like this, that's a very different mood than let's say something like this. It's completely different. It's the same pattern of notes. I'm starting with a some kind of C chord and having da 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 da. But whether I'm choosing the minor sec the minor uh, second, this note, this note, this note, uh, this note, like all the different kind of notes I'm choosing, paint a completely different picture. And it's very intentional. It's very deliberate. I, like I know what notes are giving me what feeling and how they can. How can they can affect your mood? I'm thinking about your mood right now and my mood, the thing that's happening inside my heart. I'm thinking about some, I don't know, I can think about some smooth uh, nighttime jazz theme and some cyberpunk or film noir. The lady is urging the private detective. to think about how can it can actually help this woman with her uh, with her private eye case that she needs help the bar is closed and time to leave for the day you know you can think of a little uh, story just based on the chords you play but if it was just random chords like you just played Random, you're not really thinking about it. You're just like trying to um, set a mood, um, but you're not really thinking about what kind of chords you're playing underneath. You're not going to be able to really sh evoke the same kind of emotion. So this is just a very, this off the top of my head. It wasn't like the best thing ever. It was just an example of um, sort of uh, how you can use intervals to to express mood. You know, a lot of people, again, just think of sound effects. They think, oh, I need a piano with like, a lo-fi beat and maybe some jazz track, but they don't they're not really think about the intervals. They're not really thinking about what actually makes something sound jazzy quotation marks, you know? Um, is so by Harla Salvani, Salvanini live in a tortured poet society. Yeah, that's sort of, it sucks. Uh, Orchestral piece, definitely not a piano piece. Don't bother. I don't remember what song I'm thinking of. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. Hopefully you, hopefully you remember. I just think um, people should pay more attention to how music intervals can actually affect mood. Well, like again, I think about dream sequences a lot. Your dreams can go from one scene to the next to the next over like you know a few minutes, and it's just kind of a dream in your head. It's not something you could really write down properly, word for word, but it might be something. Um, you can express in music you know it's not something you can really put down in like a movie you can really perfectly visualize it's not a dream isn't really something you can um again write down in like a novel like a fully novelization like a dream is a lot more abstract than that and music has that kind of abstraction you don't need words you have the the sounds the indefinite sounds kind of paints your sounds I could do something super abstract with and I guess you could think of it like more like painting that's why I call it painting with colors you know something you can only really do with music properly um I think that's why I like music aha <laughs> music supremacist <laughs> it's funny reading like old like uh philosophical you 
know, treatise on music. It's like, oh, music is bad because uh, once you play it, it's gone forever, you know? You can't just keep looking at that note. It's just gone. It plays and it's gone into the distance. You can't keep looking at it like a painting. So therefore, music is worse, you know? Uh, but that also gives it a temporal feeling. So you can actually show a passage, a passage of time, just like in real life. Something exists and it doesn't exist in the next second. So just like a musical note. Um, the way I write songs is even like that. Like sometimes I'll introduce a certain uh, a certain instrument, a certain like a little riff, or a certain like like um, melodic idea, or a little uh, melodic motif, or a little rhythmic little thing, or something out musical element. You know, I'll I'll sh make it show up in my songs as a little as a little. Um, like a character showing up in and in and out or a little not a character just a something coming in and coming out of it popping in and popping out of existence you know Dr. Manhattan in the, in the laboratories maybe I'll do that with an interval like a sharp fourth
little bluesy riff I played. The minor seventh made a third to the roots. I'm playing it again. We're in a bluesy mode again. But the bluesy mode wants to go back to, because I told you about the dominant function before the tritone. It's trying to fight it. It wants to go, no, no, it's not going to go back to the C. There, but it's pulling, it's pulling to something else, the dominant function it wants to go back to the C eventually. progression for longer. But I think it's time to stop fighting. I'm gonna, gonna stop fighting the dominant function and go back to the C. And it goes back to that sharp fourth over the C that the original song was trying to avoid. go so this is just a little a little demonstration I usually like give some narration over it with some like kind of story like oh a guy goes on a train and he's having a little trip but I wanted to show like literally just using intervals little patterns like this little bluesy pattern like the little bluesy pattern or the sharp four interval that I was playing with you know um you can just use those kind of little patterns and little intervals as their own storytelling. And whether they show up or not in the song or if they're being kind of avoided and you're not really playing with them at the moment. Um, and you're using little diversions, maybe little minor key diversions every so often, you know. Um, just a little, like, you can have a little adventure purely with musical sounds, with the intervals themselves that can tell their own story, even without any words any lyrics not I wasn't really playing much melodies either I, I I melodies are really important to me I think without melodies music is like the most boring shit ever so obviously improvisation you know I wasn't thinking super super much about uh, really really good melodies or whatever um but just with the intervals and harmonies that you're making with the different sound waves and stuff interacting with each other you can create your own Painted, painted emotions, both that what you're trying to express and also what you want to express to the other people, what you want other people to hear, to feel. Because if you paint a big, like, big red scary image of painting, people will probably look at it and go like, oh, that's, like, intense. But you can do the same thing with music. You can impart those kind of feelings in such a, like, a, in a very fun way. It's a little, it's a little, you know, you're kind of manipulate the kind of ear a little bit to really feel a certain way but that's just like that's what you know trying to express yourself is all about trying to make someone else really like feel or understand what you're trying to show um you could do that purely with just sound waves with just piano notes with no words needed i do love words i I'm, almost all of my songs have like words for them you know but um that's just like so so i can sing the melodies you know um, the music alone still sort of has the same emotion to it as the words give it, you know? I think it's very important. Big Red. Hello, hello, Kimikote. Hello. Oh boy, it's already like midnight, so I think I'll be wrapping up. Um, I didn't even have a little break or anything. Oh my god. Oh my god, wait, did we get another subscriber? Oh my god. A bunch of follows. Thank you. Thank you. Ugh. 
Oh, thank you, thank you for following. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. the theme it's all easy to understand if you know intervals you know we're going to chord progressions i guess so to schedule just like thursday nights uh not not really i just kind of go whenever i have time <laughs> whenever i'm available my schedule is all over the place with work so i kind of just whenever whenever i have time i'm really sorry it's usually evenings though i pretty much will always stream evenings like from seven o'clock to midnight or eight o'clock or nine o'clock to midnight usually <laughs> <sighs> Three and a half hours full of musical power. Let's um, let's raid someone. Let's raid someone. Who would you like me to raid? Who would you like me to raid? Uh, <sighs> oh yeah, my throat hurts so much. <laughs> Talking too much. Um. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I want to show off my DAW more because I think everyone should get my, uh, should play around with the musical DAW program because you don't need to know notation to play, uh, to play in like Reaper or Ableton or whatever, whatever thing you have, Pro Tools, whatever. Uh, if you have anything like that, if you know these intervals, you don't need to know notation. Um, 
Notation is really important uh, if you want to learn like classical music or something. And it's important just like running, like, you know, you want to learn to anime OP. Well, YouTube has the notation for it, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's very important. But if you just want to try out some song, like chords and stuff, and you don't have a musical instrument, you can just get a DAW. You don't need a DAW. You don't need a musical instrument or even as a keyboard to play with a musical program like a DAW. So go download some free one if they're available. <gasps> I don't know which ones are free. I got Reaper. Um, whatever, whatever is available for you. And you can just play around. You can get a little, you don't even need to play any, you don't need to learn how to play piano or keyboard to really, um, see how you can get music to sound good. You know, you can get like one instrument to play the C major chord. You can get a low bass note to get the, the C note in. You can make your own music that way. Just like that. Um, yeah, Ableton, Ableton on. One of his friends dropped. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, it's fine. I, I'll just uh, be a little more cautious next time. I'll stick to like uh, VTuber people, you know. Um, they're usually well behaved. Uh, I'll keep blasting your Twitter replies. But ooh, you should stream. Thank you. Yeah, if you do, pre if you do pressure me to stream, I'll d I will stream more often. It's always like, well, I could, you know, I could have like recorded more vocals in the meantime, and it's like, no way. <sighs> I was already sung out. My 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 thing was all whatever. Um, I got Ableton for free with my dad. Yeah, go go play around with Ableton. You know, you just like play around with how intervals sound. Try to make like some major chords, minor chords. Chart, uh, chart on how to construct any chord from whatever thing you don't need to be you don't even need to know the notes you know so I gotta fix that one up it looks really ugly but it does exist um uh, well I don't know does anyone have any raid ideas muse score oh yeah see muse score is fine yeah I have music score too, but I don't. I don't really need it, you know. I was gonna actually use music score for uh, um, showing off some classical songs. I was gonna show off some classical songs with music score, like some of my favorite Mozart songs, just to show how these harmonies are written and showing how universal all this music stuff is but i'll do that next time how about that i'll show off a bunch of song examples and play some modes and chord progressions next time because we i think we're all in on intervals now you know we're done our intervals lessons and show how everything can be used to understand intervals everything else can be understood by using intervals i mean <laughs> Digital audio workstation, yeah. When I say DAW, I mean like a program like Reaper, Ableton, uh, Pro Tools, GarageBand, anything that has these kind of music things. Just like uh, video producers use Adobe Audition. I mean, Adobe Premiere. Adobe Audition is a musical DAW. Uh, I haven't used it in forever. Well, if nobody has any raid ideas, I just won't raid it anyway. <sighs> Anyways, pals, thank you for um we've Pro Tools in college. Right? So, yeah, it's a it's a Pro Tools is like more studio uh, producer like record label type stuff, you know. Aereo Beef is pretty tame from what I remember. Ah, <sighs> oh, tired, tired. Oh, they're playing League of Legends.
heard weird songs I'm playing. I'll send you over to Pat. Pat is playing Final Fantasy VII, guys. Go have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much, x You've been very supportive. Thank you for taking so much of an interest in it and for uh, interacting and chatting so much. Thank you, thank you. that up. Anyways, yeah, Final Fantasy VIII will return next time. We will be visiting the owl, forest owls. Um, I'm sure they're very fearsome. Very fearsome uh, troublemakers. Um. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-